Welcome to Oriole Park at Camden Yards, where the fans clamor in to see their prodigal son, Cal Ripken, and one who used to be their prodigal son, Eddie Murray, in town with the Cleveland Indians. Welcome to Baltimore, Maryland. No hurricane, beautiful night for baseball. The Cleveland Indians against the Baltimore Orioles on ESPN's Wednesday Night Baseball. Hello once again, everybody. I'm Chris Berman along with Buck Martinez. As we get toward the postseason, it's always exciting to see the team with the best record in baseball, the team with the best batting average in baseball, the team with the biggest lead in baseball, the team with the best pitching in the American League, the team that's come from behind to win more than any other team in baseball. We're talking about the Indians. This just in. They're good. Yeah, they are, Chris. And you know, it was a great plan by John Hart, the general manager. He developed the young players to a point where they are now stars, and then he went out and got some veterans like Eddie Murray and tonight's starting pitcher, Oral Hershiser. Urshizer was the MVP in the 88 World Series, and he understands how important it is to pitch well down the stretch. The Orioles figured it was all set up. It was a perfect script. Cal Ripken's going to break Lou Gehrig's record. The Orioles are in the hunt. Here we go, the beginning of August. They get Bobby Bonilla. And what happens? Since Bonilla became an Oriole on July 29th, it's been a Tom Petty free falling. The Orioles have gone 5 and 13. What happened, Buck? Well, I tell you, Chris, you know, sometimes we forget how difficult it is to win a pennant. And the Orioles, yeah, they were in pretty good position when they got Bonilla. But so many players on this Oriole ball club hadn't experienced what it's like to play big games in August and September. Unlike Oral Hershiser, they're going through it for the first time. Well, Cal Ripken's gone through it just a couple of times in his career. And, oh, by the way, consecutive game number 2,111 for Cal. Stay with us. Wednesday Night Baseball is brought to you by McDonald's. Have you had your break today? And by Kelly Springfield, America's oldest tire company. Welcome back to Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Kind of hard to believe this is the fourth year already with this park. It's getting old. It's beautiful here. It's a great place. And the Baltimore Orioles got to work last night winning 8-3, to three, Buck, but... They still find themselves six games out in the wild card chase, which, at least in the American League, is becoming the hunt. All three divisions seem to be pretty well in hand. Mike Hargrove and the Cleveland Indians certainly have uh, had their way this year with a 17-game lead in the American League Central over the Milwaukee Brewers. And here's the lineup that, uh, well, that they penciled in to start the year. Kenny Lofton starts in center field. Omar Vizquel is in shortstop. Carlos, one up by land, two up by sea, three up by Erga is at second base. Albert Bell hitting cleanup in left field. Eddie Eat, Drink, and B. Murray back in Baltimore, D.H. Jim Tomey, can you hear me, at third. Manny Ramirez in right field. Paul Beal Sorrento, the first baseman. Sandy Alomar, a 314 hitter, hitting ninth for the Cleveland Indians against the slider, sinker, curveballer Kevin Brown, former Texas Ranger, this year a Baltimore Oriole. Now, well, Kevin Brown goes to the mound for his 18th start of the season. He hasn't won since June 2nd. Seven home runs, that's a good number in this ballpark. He throws a great sinker ball, keeps the ball down, keeps it in the ballpark, but he is going to have to get an awful lot of ground ball outs against this Indian ball club tonight. Kevin Brown had some problems. He swiped at a Troy O'Leary comebacker and dislocated a finger on his pitching hand. Put him on a disabled list. This is his eighth start since coming back off the list. The Orioles have always had outstanding outfield defense, but right now they've got some guys trying to get comfortable with one another. Cal Ripken has been steady as ever at shortstop. He got his great hands, a good strong arm, and look at the judgment on this play in New York against the Yankees. Going in the hole, quickly stops and fires a strike across the infield and still got enough on that ball to get Darrell Williams at first. One thing that's constant is the shortstop in Baltimore. This also just in as we watch Kenny Lofton look at the first pitch from Kevin Brown. This is for ball one. Lofton feeling a little bit better at the hammy a little bit. And of course, his speed game at the top of the lineup, a big part of his and the Indians game. And as he fouls that off, it's one and one. Very quickly, you look at his Indian batting order, Buck, except for the number two hole, Vizquel, and the number eight hole, Paul Sorrento. The other seven hitters, all above 300. Wow. I uh, see Jeff Houston in on the grass, trying to take the bun away from Kenny Lofton, but they can swing the lumber. 
Pirates up top. To Lofton, it's a two and one. The umpire and crew tonight, Terry Kraft behind the plate. John Dankinger at first base. John Tulock at second. Tim Cheetah is at third base. Third game of a three-game set. Each team has won one thus far. Ground ball to second. Nice backhanded play made. But fired away by Brett Barbary. Boy, Barbary was in on almost every other play last night. He had a long way to go, and knowing it was off, and he hurried it more than a little bit, and very quickly, get. Elioreos have committed the fewest errors in the league, and right here, Barbary makes an error to start the ball game, and that's nowhere near Rafael Palmero at first base. You know, even though they haven't committed many errors, their defense hasn't been as good as it's been in the past here at Baltimore. They have not been able to make the key plays to help out the pitching staff. And overall, with all the guys moving around in the different positions, they just haven't developed as a defensive ball club this year. Well, with a throw going in the dugout, Lofton gets the second base, so there's gift number one, and you don't want to give the Cleveland Indians more than three outs an inning, that's for sure. That'll bring up Omar Vizquel, shortstop, hitting the 267. Shows bunt, pulls it back, takes it for ball one. Lofton, this year in the stolen base category, certainly not up to his uh, totals before, which is 26 stolen bases. Totals before, which we won a couple of weeks. Uh, Stolen base time. Rip. Barbary dives. Makes this throw. Nice play by Barbary. Lost in the third. One out. Now that time Barbary saved a run early in this inning. Lofton moves over to third base on the play, but this is good baseball by Omar Vizquel. He pulls the ball on the ground on the right side, and you can see Barbary with the dive, looked in his glove and just say, wow, I got it, and then fires the first base for the out. The defensive play by the Orioles second baseman. He did take a long time. Yeah, to he looked ball, in his glove like, hmm. Let's see, is it a Bobby <laughs> Brown ball, or is it a Buddha ball, or who, who signed this league president? Joe Cronin ball? I mean, I don't know what he was looking for. This is Carlos Baerga, the all-star second baseman for the Indians. All he did in the all-star game, you remember, was get three hits. So, so much for all-star jitters. He's been there before. Baerga this year at 325. 14 homers and 64 RBIs. And you see he's doing even hotter the last couple of weeks. Good. Breaking ball by Brown. And Baerga swings and misses one and one. This breaking ball inside, and it's off the plate a bit. It starts it on the inside corner and breaks it inside to Bayer, and he swings over the top of it. Well, you ask a lot of people around the American League, and they'll tell you Kevin Brown has as good a stuff as anybody. One of the many mystery pitchers he has the stuff but Of course, it wasn't long ago that he was the starting pitcher for the American League in the All-Star game. Swings and misses does Bayer. That was not that long ago. It was three years ago, the All-Star game in San Diego. American League erupted off Tom Glavin and company. And Brown is the starter and winner. Lofton, runner at third base with one out. Well, there's another good pitch right on the hands of Bayer. Bill Reagan has had a bit of a tough time the last 18 ball games since they acquired Molly Bonilla, this ball club, 5 and 13, as you pointed out. First year manager in Baltimore. Signed a two year contract, which is somewhat surprising given the fact that this is his first opportunity of managing the big leagues. Well, he certainly knows the team that he's playing tonight, the Cleveland Indians, the pitching coach there. Did he go around? Yes, he did. So Brown worked very well to Bayerga and gets a very tough out, two down here in the top of the first. Boy, he stayed right in on his hands throughout the entire at bat. He breaks off a breaking ball down and in. Bayerga couldn't keep his hands back. Watch how he tries to check his swing, but that bat goes around. Strikeout for Brown. So that'll bring up Albert Bell, a cleanup hitter for the Indians. 26 home runs, 79 RBIs, hitting at 305. Slugging percentage of near 600. Albert has a shot, even in the shortened season, to hit the 40 home run mark. Rip past a diving Jeff Houston, and the Indians are on the board. The ball had hair on it as he swings at the first pitch. And it's 1-0 Cleveland. Albert Bell might be the best student of pitchers on that Indian ball club. 
He's looking for a sinker ball. Watch how high this pitch is. It's a high sinker ball that tracks inside. Bell gets it and rips it by a diving Jeff Houston, and the Indians jump out in front. So now will bring up a man that just got a very nice ovation, as well he should, for all of his years here in Baltimore. Eddie, eat, drink, and be Murray. And he came here on Monday night, didn't play, but they unfurled that banner. Congratulations, Eddie. The number 3,000 was his first time in Baltimore since he became the 20th player in the history of Major League Baseball to get 3,000 hits. He came out of the dugout, doffed his cap as a thunderous ovation he played last night. And he's back in there tonight as DH. Boy, he and Cal together were something, were they not? That 83 team that won the World Series when Ripken won the MVP. Murray second in MVP balloting, was second in MVP balloting twice here in Baltimore. Two years in a row, the year before to Young. Left and they were on him a little bit, but they remember Ripken, Murray, his youngsters. Pretty good heart of the order. Well, and they have very similar personalities in that neither one of them commands an awful lot of attention. They just go out there and play day in and day out. Murray still leads the Orioles in career home runs. And Cal Ripken says he owes an awful lot of his success to Eddie Murray. Murray has an 11 home run lead on Ripken. Oriole team home run lead. Hit weekly to first base where Palmero will retire his. Predecessors at first base, Eddie Murray, but the Indians are on the board. Bottom of the first inning, the Indians on the board. They changed the loft and play to a single and an error, so they did get two hits in the inning. They're allowing them to go to second base, and now here come the Baltimore Orioles. Had a six-run first inning last night on route to an eight-to-three victory, but batting average is worst in the league. And all they hit home runs. They don't score many runs. And when your pitching has ballooned as it has the last month, or at least three weeks, you got to do some batting. Curtis Goodwin, the youngster, leads off in center field. Brady Bunch Anderson in left field. Raphael Emerson Lake and Paul Merrill. At first base, Bobby Bonilla hitting cleanup in right field. The name Cal Ripken at shortstop should not come as a surprise. Harold Growing Bane, the DH. Chris Hoyles, the catcher. Jeff Houston at third. Brett Barbary at second. Going up against the man that Kamala's daughter and Dodger folks used to call Bulldog. Oral Hershiser. Hershiser goes to the mound for his 19th start of the season. You see his record at 9 and 5. And the thing about Hershiser, look at the home runs. That's a pretty high number for Hershiser. That's a home run per start. It tells me that that sinker ball is creeping up about belt high when Hershiser is getting in trouble. He's given up 10 home runs in his last eight starts. Curtis Goodwin, the youngster with the high socks. Looks at ball one from Hershiser. Goodwin struggling as of many of the Orioles as the last couple of weeks. And knowing that and knowing his speed, Tommy in on the grass at third base as the count is one and one. Well, Curtis Goodwin came up and really made an impact early on. He was hitting well over 350 for the first month of his major league career, but the pitchers have made some adjustments on him. Good, Good movement on that fastball. Goodwin started to expand his strike zone, and when you go against a veteran like Oral Hirschheiser, he will really exploit that. Lazy ground ball to Bayerga over to Sorrento, and one up, one down in the Baltimore first. And that'll bring up Brady Anderson. who also has been scuffling the last couple of weeks. Brady with the longest sideburns in the league. Of course, those sideburns now, about 15 years ago, would be nothing, but you don't see a lot of those around. Brady's kept them through the years. He's come up with the Red Sox. And of course, he's been over here in Baltimore since the late 80s. Traded St. Mike Potter over here. Boston in one of their pennant runs in 88, which was the last time a team in Boston was as hot as this team. So they lost again today, and this time Anderson gets plunked, and they'll take it. The Orioles will take a base runner any way they can. They get a man on here with one down. Now Hershiser tries to come inside to Anderson, and that ball didn't move back over the plate. Brady took it off the hamstring, and he'll get on with one out. 
Cleveland Indians are ninth in the American League in defense, and Mike Hargrove's a little concerned about their focus on defense right now. They're making a lot of mental mistakes, and it doesn't really show up in the box score, but he wants to see a little more execution. So I'm a little concerned as we get into the postseason that we might make some mistakes that can cost us in the short series. I'm going to correct something in case people are worried up in Beantown. They beat the Yankees 7 to 4 the Red Sox. They didn't do it. They took 2 or 3 from the Yankees. They are flying. This is Raphael Emerson Lake and Palmero. He's been flying. He's hit a homer in each of his last three games for the Orioles. Rafi, the average up at uh, 298. Several times in his career, Hershiser comes across the plate. Palmero takes it for strike one. Brady Anderson, good base deal. Matter of fact, broke the American League record for consecutive stolen bases till he was run down a few weeks ago in Minnesota. Ground ball, though, Taylor made by Erga. Is Kell. Over to Sorrento, despite a big slide by Anderson, Palmero is gone. Four, six, three. We played one here at Baltimore. The Indians up one to nothing. Back in Baltimore, the Indians have a one to nothing lead as we go to the top of the second. Oral Hershiser throws a lot of sinker balls, and right here he gets the ground ball right to the second baseman, Carlos Baerga. He turns quickly and fires to Vizquel, and even though he's got Brady Anderson bearing down on him, the Indians turn a nice double play. Look at this girl dance out of harm's way there at second. 14th double play turned behind Earl Hershiser this year. That's the kind of defense Mike Cargo wants to see a little more consistent. That will tell you that that sinker ball that was creeping up on the home run stat is creeping down sometime with a runner at first base as we begin the second inning. And speaking of high socks, one of the youngsters really blossoming this year for the Cleveland Indians. Jim Tomey, can you hear me? 32 batting average, fifth in the American League, 21 homers, 53 RBIs. Playing all the time against righties and lefties. He's not nervous about, oh, I went 0 for 4. I'm going to sit for three days or be sent down to the minors. He's fielding much better. He has big time potential for a long time. Three bucks? Yeah, no doubt about it. He's got one thing that all great hitters need no fear. Look at that back foot. He is almost standing on the inside corner. Goes the opposite way. Long run for Anderson. He's not going to get it as it jumps in. Tomey into second base with a double. So it wasn't the prettiest double that Jim Tomey will amass in his career. But again, for the second inning in a row, leadoff man for the Indians standing on second base. Uh, Brown has that good move, and you see Tommy made contact well back over the plate. Brady Anderson was over in left center, had a long run, played it on the hop. And by the time Tommy sees this is going to land in fair territory, he hustles around first base and has himself a leadoff double. Good hustle by the big third baseman. That'll bring up Manny Ramirez. Now here's where you start to realize what this lineup of the Indians is all about. After about a month of the season, Ramirez was leading or second in all of the Triple Crown categories, and he's hitting seventh as he gets ninth. So, I mean, you have a guy like that hitting seventh, I think you understand what kind of lineup it is to try and pitch through. And they really haven't worried at all about moving him up in the batting line. They like where he is, they think he's comfortable right there. Breaking ball by Brown. It's oh. a kind of a running joke on the Indians bench about Ramirez and the fact that he is oblivious to the count. And that's what leads to these great numbers of runners in scoring position. He's never worried about count. He's just up there concentrating on the pitcher. Oftentimes he'll stand in the box with ball four and just wait for the next pitch. But he's locked in. Now at 0 and 2, Brown was not about to come over the plate. Ramirez did not go fishing. Count is one and two. Ramirez in just his uh, second full season. 23 years of age. Number one draft pick of the tribe in 91. Grew up in the Bronx. His first major league games about a mile from home. Yankee Stadium had two home runs. What thrill that was for the Good pitch by Kevin Brown as Ramirez goes fishing with a pitch over the outside black of the plate. Brown has made some good pitches tonight, and that was one of them, Buck. Uh, he really makes a good pitch with the fastball in the outside corner. 
a little bit of sink right at the end and you can see Ramirez with a very tentative swing just trying to make contact and keep the bat alive. So that'll bring up Paul Sorrento who has three lifetime homers against Brown all of them in the same season a couple of years ago in 93 two of them in one game. this one to right but didn't get under it enough Bobby Bonilla makes the play quickly throws the ball in and Toby back to second base two out by the Cleveland Indians after a hundred games this year 67 and 33 17 games up on the Brewers who are at 500 and then you see the rest of the division they've lapped Minnesota already in the standings the 54 team, which went 110 and 44 after 100 games, was 70 and 30. So, I mean, that puts it into perspective what kind of start these Indians have had. The 54 team with that great record, this last World Series team the Indians had. 41 years later, and it happened again. And the first pitch to Sandy Alomar is in there for a strike. Now here's the number nine hitter, Sandy Alomar, the off injured Alomar, hitting at 314. So there, it is, there's no way to kind of dance through this lineup, is there, if you're a pitcher? Now, there are no soft spots, one through nine. And jam with that second ball. You know, Sandy, as you mentioned, had surgery on April 26th again on his knee. He's had lot, lots of problems with his knee. He's had back problems, hip problems, and you can see the heavy brace on his left knee there. He said he's going to wear that for the rest of the season, just as a precautionary measure. Well, you know firsthand, obviously, uh, the pitfalls of playing catcher in the major leagues. But he, except for his first full season with the Indians in 90, has never had a complete season. So we don't really know what he's capable of. We think we know. This year, no exception. But I mean, you're always going to get something. But he's had worse luck than most. Well, there you go. Makes you really appreciate the Johnny Benches and Carlton Fisks and Jim Sunbirds, people that play year after year every single day and are able to avoid serious injury. Sandy Alomar just had a rash of bad luck. Yet even during his injury years, the count is two and two. He's been. Voted to start the All-Star game three straight times. Really. Injuries? Did somebody say the word injury? I don't. I don't think Cal knows what that is. Well, he knows what it is. He may have played with him, but never missed one. Good pitch by Brown as he gets Alomar fishing on the outside corner. So Tommy stranded after a leadoff double, one nothing Cleveland to the bottom of the second. And welcome, everyone, to our Wednesday night baseball studios. I'm Carl Ravitch. We will keep you up to date throughout the evening on all the games, including the wild card games. Here's an interesting note about the game in Baltimore. The Indians, while they score all those runs and don't get cheated when they come to the plate, they don't strike out much either. Only the White Sox strike out fewer times. They go back to Boomer in the land of the crab cake. Crab cake and frosted flakes, Ravi. It doesn't get any better than that. As we start the bottom of inning number two, Benia Ripken and Harold Baines up for the Orioles against Oral Hershiser. All one, starting off with Bobby Bo, who has hit four home runs here as an Oriole. Each one of them has either tied or put the Orioles ahead. Yet in each of the games, the Orioles ended up losing late or in extra innings. So Bobby Bo snake bit here early with Baltimore. Now he's had a lot of luck against Oral Hershiser. Four home runs, 11 ribbies, and you saw him swinging a low sinker ball. That's the pitch he's trying to lay off of. Hershiser can get Bonilla to chase that sinker out of the strike zone down. He's really got him where he wants him. Then he can go upstairs with the fastball and play both ends of the spectrum. Little chopper that Oral knocks down has time to make the play. Over to Sereno, there's one out. And guess who's coming to the plate? Number eight, Cal Ripken. Stays out an hour after the game, signing autographs for all the kids and all the fans when all his teammates have showered. Today did eight interviews. He's enjoying what's happening to him this year, where maybe a year or two ago, 
he didn't realize the big picture. Boy, the picture is awfully large. And what he is coming close to doing, this will be once the team that's behind is batted five times, becomes an official game. In second game number 2,111. Lou Gehrig, 2,130. He's scheduled to break it on a Wednesday night here at Camden Yards against the California Angels. I think there's an outside chance that Wednesday night baseball just might be here. And that'll be a treat for everybody in the country as Hershiser misses the bat pitch. It's one and one. You know, Chris, there was a while where Cal didn't want to hear anything about the streak, but now he has kind of given in and softened that stance. But his approach to this entire streak thing is, hey, that's my job. I just go out there because that's what I'm supposed to do. Ground ball to short. Viz Kell over to Sorrento and Ripken is gone. There are two outs here in the Orioles second. Cal said he had a long talk early in the year with Paul Molitor. And Molly said, yeah, just relax. You, you've earned all this. Just enjoy it. Enjoy what's happening to you. He said that plus just getting out there and, and feeling the adulation from not only here his home fans but around the league. He understands what's what's happening and he really is enjoying it. As we are enjoying him. First pitch fouled off by Harold Baines. Harold Baines grew up about 90 minutes from Baltimore. So when he came back to Baltimore a few years ago, he essentially was coming home. Silver Spring, Maryland, down towards the shore. Speaking of the shore, might as well just get this in. We know that Hurricane Felix is, is heading towards the North Carolina coast. Uh, some concern in this area, though you, you can't tell now. Uh, there's not a tropical storm warning here in Baltimore, but down to the shore there will be in the wee hours of the morning, and we hope that those folks uh, more in the path in Carolina and Virginia and that the hurricane just takes it easy. There's some concern about the afternoon game here tomorrow that the Orioles have against Kansas City. Will it get in if some of the residual rain comes up? But hurricanes can change at the very end. Right now, that's the forecast. Rain here tomorrow. And not that bad on the coast, except down towards Cape Hatteras and stuff. And we hope that everybody uh, weathers it nicely. Now, this team has weathered it nicely, haven't they? Yeah, they're jalapeno. pretty uptight, aren't they? <laughs> Frozen ropes. Now, Pena's got to really loosen up. Yeah. Entirely yeah. intense when he comes out. He's one of the most enjoyable people to be with at the park. <laughs> Count us three and two. To, and there's Dave Winfield currently on the DL. You know, there's a team up by 17 games, can't you? Alvaro Espinosa. Pena's fouls it off. Pena's yeah. played a big role here with this club with Alomar Hurt. When Alomar went down, Pena filled in and played every single day. And last week, uh, when Dennis Martinez got his contract, Payne said, hey, maybe I'll get one, too. <laughs> he catches Dennis all the time. Now Dennis hopes he gets one. Count is full to Harold Baines. one nothing Indian lead here, bottom of the second. Nobody on. Two out. You know, you wonder what comes first, winning or the relaxed approach. I believe it's the relaxed approach. Dennis Martinez got off a 9-0 start. He's second in the American League with a 287 ERA. He's got confidence. He knows it's a good ball club and he'll score a lot of runs. That confidence filled over to the young guys, and they brought in guys like Dave Winfield and Eddie Murray, veteran players who have been down this road before, and they know how to keep everybody on the right track. I'd like to see Big Dave get some more at-bats. Strike three. Good pitch by Hershiser to Harold Baines. And a 1 2 3 inning for Aura. We've played two here in Baltimore. 1 0 Cleveland. Following our game, we'll go out west where the San Diego Padres and Tony Gwynn had a zero in on another batting crown. Can he win his sixth in the NL? His 364 average leads the league. The Pods at home against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Padres know that the Dodgers have won already this afternoon. They're trying to keep pace. The Pods are four and a half back in third place in the NL West. That's after this game. 
Wayne Stats and Joe Morgan. Beautiful night for baseball here in Baltimore. Cooled down a little bit from the last couple of days as we are one nothing here in the third inning and Kevin Brown has made some good pitches but I'm keeping my eye on Oral Hershiser tonight Buck because I think in the scheme of things they know what they have with Dennis Martinez. Nagy a youngster got cuffed around last night. I think Oral is a key figure for Cleveland as they anticipate October. Well, so far in this ball game, it looks as though he's got real good movement and location, so we'll have to keep our eye on that as this game unfolds. Kenny Lofton got it going. That infield hit. Went for second base on an air by Barbary. Hits this one to left field. Brady Anderson had him positioned perfectly, shading him down the left field line. And there is one out always positioned perfectly is Carl Rabbit. Well, Boomer, thanks very much. You talked about Ripken's experience. Here's another guy with years of experience. The Hawk with the bases loaded off Steve Avery. A grand slam. His seventh, and it is 5-0 in favor of Florida over Atlanta. Chris? All right, Ravi, thank you. The Hawk. We love the Hawk. Andre Dawson. Omar Vizquel looks at ball one from Kevin Brown. Dawson in so many of the categories that Eddie Murray and Dave Winfield are in up there in the hits, the home runs. Talk about good people in the game. I think Andre Dawson is near the top of the list. Yeah, he's probably a guy that could stay in the game and work in the front office. He's been around and has a real good mind, somebody that could add a lot to somebody's front office. Count is 3 0 to Ms. Kell. There's, There's another guy, too, that has a huge background. Players Association understands both sides of the table. And I believe Dave Winfield would really be an asset, much like Sal Bando. Mm -hmm. Sal's in Milwaukee as a general manager. I think Buck Dave can be more of an asset to this Indian team this year. He's only batted 90 times. He hasn't hit like the game that we've seen. There's another pitch in there to Ms. Kell. So Kevin Brown, who was behind 3 0, comes back to 3 2. But on the DL now, but I just think that you get him at bats, you get him in a groove, you can play a role on this team that is so full of hitters. Uh, Kevin Brown coming back nicely from a 3-0 count to strike out Vizquel looking. Two out. Keep your eye on the movement on this fastball. Watch Vizquel draw his hands in, and then that ball has so much movement it catches the inside part of the plate. That's the kind of stuff that these American League hitters see when they face Kevin Brown. But more often than not, during the course of a ball game, he will make a mistake and open up the door for the opponents. A lot of afternoon games in the majors. You're seeing the scores. This is Carlos Baerga, who struck out in the first inning. Baerga, of course, with Sandy Alomar, came over. December of 89, the Padres, along with Chris Bartles and James, in exchange for Joe Carter. So Carter, who had had good years in Cleveland, went out to San Diego. Cleveland started building for the future with that deal right there. Well, John Hart decided that he had some good young players and signed them to long-term contracts, and they all came up about the same time. Austin, Bell, Baerga, Nagy, Alomar. Off the fist. Look at Kevin Brown. Oh, but he can't ice cream cone it. And Baerga will be on. Trying to handle it all himself. Well, I think they got in between. Baerga's going to get a hit for this, but I don't know that Brown didn't expect Palmer to take it. They both kind of laid back a little bit. Let's watch this play unfold. Big swinging bun down the first baseline. Brown comes after him and then looks to Palmer just for a moment when he did that. He couldn't glove it. If he just goes after the ball, watch the look. Little glance toward Paul Merrill. Lost his concentration, and Paul Merrill didn't come after it. So there's another aspect of that Oriole defense we talked about. It doesn't go into books as an error, but it's a play that could have been made. Well, the Indians have four hits, two of them in the infield. Play that uh, the Barbary by Lofton. That hit. Tommy didn't really get good lumber on his double. Albert Bell's base hit, the only one that was really smoked. It was an RBI single with two out in the first inning, and that's why the Indians lead it one nothing. Chop. 
through the left side again by Bell and the Indians have two on here with two outs. So a little infield play which could have ended the inning now the Indians with their lineup have two on and Eddie Murray coming up. Well, we talked about Albert Bell being a great student of the pitcher he's facing. It looked to me like he is thinking about getting something on the inside part of the plate. First time up he got a fastball inside and hooked it to the hole and that time he got a hanging slider and hooked it through the hole. He goes up there with a game plan and doesn't deviate from it. He doesn't get wild. He takes a lot of pitches and he's got a very good approach at the plate. You know, it's hard to believe it's been seven years since Murray played in Baltimore from 1977 to 1988. As you mentioned before, Bucky's still the Oriole career leader in home runs with 333. It's fourth in games played, third in RBIs, just being passed by Ripken this year. So his name and Oriole lore forever. Right up there with Cal and Brooks Robinson, Blue Powell. Consistency, yeah, I think so. Always a great producer at the plate. One thousand seven hundred eighty nine career RBIs, fourteenth lifetime. That is two and oh. These are the counts you just hate to get into if you pitch to Eddie Murray. He can really zero in now. His strength is out over the plate and down. He has that swing where he'll just drop the head on the ball down and away from him, and he can drive it out of the ballpark anyway. 2 0 count. Murray lays off, and Hoyles will have to talk with Brown. Looks like they're going to be out of the inning, and all of a sudden, the Indians have a big rally going. Well, these are the types of things that have haunted Brown from time to time where, you know, just get a little crack in the door and then kick it wide open. Mike Flanagan, the first year pitching coach here at Baltimore, really has a great appreciation for the stuff Brown takes with him to the mound, but it's been somewhat frustrating to watch Kevin Brown, who has not won since June 2nd. Some of that has to do with the injury. He was on the DL with a dislocated finger on his pitching hand, but in seven starts since that, since he came off the DL, he hasn't won. Well, he misses on four straight pitches to Eddie Murray, so base is clear of two out. Now, base is loaded with two out, and Jim Tomey up, who doubled in the second inning. There you see the numbers we were mentioning in 10 starts since the last one. 0 and 5 with an ERA approaching five runs a game. Now he's going to get a visit from Mike Flanagan. Pretty good career here. Oh, yeah. Pitcher himself, didn't he? Well, you know what, you know what Kevin needs really is Flanny's sense of humor. Those, those Orioles had some good yucks back then, did they not? You know, Flanagan and Dempsey huddled on the mound. There, there was some uh, some humor thrown around. <laughs> Rick Dempsey and Flanagan, Boddicker, Palmer. You know what? With Mike? Lowenstein. Oh. <laughs> Classic. You know what Mike was great at was in addition to the pitching. He hung similar nicknames as I do on players. Always did. John Clams Castino is his, not mine. Base is loaded. Tommy up. Brown working with two outs, and he tries the curveball, misses inside, ball one. When Jim Tommy goes to the plate, he has just had a conversation with his batting instructor, Charlie Manuel, and he is going to remind him, don't think about a home run now. Just stay on the ball and try to drive it toward an alley. A little bit longer to look at it. Trying to fastball misses up top and high, and it's two and zero. Oh. This young man is as strong as anybody in the league, and he can hit it out to left field, center field, right field, and now he's got the count in his favor. There's 21 home runs. So six straight balls, and Tommy at two and zero. Oh. Swings and the count is two and one. Well, he's going to swing and expand his strike zone when he's got the count in his favor a bit like that. He's going to look for a fastball. There's Charlie Manuel. Manuel has had Jim Tomey, either as a batting coach or served as Tomey's manager throughout their minor league stint. Tomey played for Charlie Manuel and he has the ultimate trust in him. He gives him a game plan for does he stick to it. Up 
under it, but back it goes to right. Benia going back. But in center field, it's Goodwin that makes the play. Just missed it, and Tommy knew it. So Kevin Brown and the Orioles wriggle free from a bases loaded jam. It's still 1-0. Welcome back to Camden Yards. Chris Berman along with Buck Martinez on Wednesday Night Baseball. The Indians with a run in the first and an RBI single by Albert Bell. And they lead it one nothing. And yes, the Orioles fans, thank God for the wild card. If there ever is a year that they're going to put this thing in there, they picked the right year with all three races in the American League pretty much over. And barring Houston jumping back in there with Cincinnati, looks like two out of the three in the National League are over. Instead of that NL West. Wild card standings as Oral Hershiser works to Chris Boyles. Up to the minute, the Orioles are six back, but anything can happen with teams hovering around that 500 mark. Well, a six isn't a bad number for the Orioles. What really is a problem for them is all the clubs they got to pass in front of them. There aren't going to be that many teams losing every single night. So Reagan knows that to really get back into the wild card picture, they're going to have to get red hot and have a lot of people. Hold around them. Chris Hoyles is a good home run hitter as a catcher. He's had more homers the last three years than any catcher in baseball except for Darren Dalton. But the average down at 213. Now what they have in mind when they sign him to a big contract. Hershiser now is the two and two to Hoyles. This Indian team a little different than some of the other ones. Did he go? Yes, he did, says first base umpire Don Denkinger, and Hoyles will sit down. Strike number two for Oral. Watch the break on this breaking ball. It's late and quick and very sharp. Hershiser brought his A game to the dance tonight. He's got good movement on his sinker ball. Don Nankinger said, yeah, Hoyles, you went around. That's the second strikeout in a row for Oral Hershiser, but he's got a very good sinker ball, good command of the strike zone. He's got that breaking ball working early. Jeff Houston shows bunt, pulls it back, and takes strike one against Hershiser. Talking with Houston before the game, he said, you know, I you enjoying it here. He said, I get to play third base next to Cal Ripley. I was in Texas. Nolan at the end. That's a pretty good few years there. Don't even have to buy a ticket to watch these guys finish. Look that one right up the top of his foot. That was some good body angles there. Well, third baseman in Baltimore have had trouble with their feet this year. Bill Gomez is on the DL with a fracture in his foot. Jeff Houston gets that breaking ball down and in. Watch how he beats it right off his front foot. Right off mm. the top of that foot. Not much protection there at all. There's Gomez on the bench, got a walking cast on his right ankle. He was just about ready to start taking batting practice, but then the foot just didn't get any better. And they had to go ahead and put the cast back on. This didn't seem like such a serious injury until Matt Williams went down with that broken foot and missed about three months of the season. And a similar swing and foul ball off his foot. Gomez's foot looks like Houston is all right at least to continue this at bat. The Giants are hoping, by the way, Williams can be back uh, for the Monday game as they open up a three-game series in New York. We'll see. And it's 0-2 to Houston. You gotta think they'll come down and in just for the heck of it, right? Could. Yep, he did. <laughs> That's not for the heck of it. That's to get it out. Yep. <laughs> he knew Houston was going to be very tentative. And now he's got the whole outside part of the plate if he wants it. He's very protective of that inside corner. He can drop that sinker down the way. Hoping to get a ground ball out. Working outside. Outside. High for ball. Hershiser has just hit one batter. Brady Anderson has raced in a double play, so he's faced the minimum thus far. With one out here in the bottom of the third inning. <laughs> you 
franchise was quite a remarkable story as you watch his delivery. He really pays attention to mechanics now. You see how he lands on that soft leg, good follow through. That ball got away from him and worked his way out of the strike zone. But he went through a career threatening injury, had surgery, and it made a remarkable comeback. Yes, he has. Every time he walked by the Indian clubhouse, he was on some kind of exercise machine, maintaining his great condition. So how's that look? Bulldog look. Gets the ground ball to second. Easy chance for Fierga over to Sorrento, and there's two down. That's four to three, and over to Carl Rabbit. Hi, Brewer. Thank you. You talk about the wild card race, and you have to talk about Seattle now that Junior's back. One for four. Last night starts off good tonight. He's 1,000th career hit off a recently acquired Frank Rodriguez. Randy Johnson for the Mariners just struck out Kirby at zip zip. Back to you, Rick. Let me tell you something. That is absolutely remarkable. He can miss that much time. Plays two games. Is already swinging the bat well. To have an injury of that magnitude. He broke both bones in his wrist. And he's got about a six inch scar on the back of his left wrist. And he's back already. He's going to make a contribution down the stretch. So and one to Brett Barbary. I'll tell you what. Seattle in a short series. If they make it. It's a big if. You're looking at pitch facing Randy Johnson twice. Whoever's hot among Basio, Venice, as we look at Houston, see if he'll continue. I was looking at his arm, must really hurt that he smarts all over. Ayala, who, who blew a big game last night, who can throw it. And they the picked way up they hit Vince Rick. Coleman. Yep. That's a pretty important pickup. A left fielder gives him a leadoff guy. Coleman was having a good year for Kansas City. Getting over 280, over 20 steals. Belcher pitching. I mean, they, they could be a dangerous team in a short series. And what about Mike Flowers? Mm. Camp from the league in Riddies. One pitch misses outside at the and one to Barbary at the bottom of the order with two outs and none on. That'd be Junior's first pennant race. Speaking of Junior, this is a youngster. First pennant race for Ken Griffey Jr. That'll be interesting. A little flare that's over the looping Vizquel. And the number nine hitter, Brett Barbary, gets the first safety of the evening for the Baltimore Orioles. Pretty good old Oriole right behind Barbary. Now Bumpery, the first base coach. Mm -hmm. They keep some of the old Orioles around, don't they? Elrod, Al Bumbry, of course, Frank Robinson in the front office, but dressing in the locker room every day. Still looks like he, he could hit 30 homers. And at the top of the order, Curtis Goodwin, Lee May, the big bopper. But you feel that team, maybe, maybe they would do better than this team's done the last couple of weeks. There's Elrod Hendricks. Talk about a good natured. Fellow like Tony Ping and Elrod certainly is there. Fierga with another chance. He's been busy tonight, and Goodwin is gone. So we played three here in Baltimore, and the Indians clinging to that one nothing lead. ESPN Wednesday Night Baseball is brought to you by Champ Sports. Get the real stuff first at Champ. Back in Baltimore, top of the fourth inning. In between innings, Jim Tomey talking to his hitting coach, Charlie Manuel. He got that big fastball. He popped it up, and he went back to his mentor and went over that stroke. So it got underneath it a little bit, Charlie. And the base is loaded in two outs and popped out to center. As we begin the fourth inning here in Baltimore, 7 8 9 of the Indians. Ramirez, Sorrento, and Alomar. Ramirez struck out his first time up against Kevin Brown. Picked him very well. He saws that one off. And nice play made down the line by the ball girl sitting by the tarp. Nice play. Give him a good round of applause. Stands. Old park, new park. Ball girls down by the tarp. It's more people see, or see them now. And 
Camden Yards. He's at an old Memorial Stadium. The crowd. Of course, almost everyone sell out or close to it. About the Indians, 25 home games left, all sold out. See. Well, that's what it's supposed to be like there. The Pennant Rays going to win the first five since 1954. Good pitch just missed to Ramirez. Count is two and one. Did they win 111 games in 54? One, one, was it 110 and one, 111. 111? But they're up under by the Giants in the World Series. So Danny Mays in center field. And it's two and two. Dustin Rhodes. Pinch hitting. Big home runs in the old polo grounds. 256 down the right field line at the old polo grounds. My kind of park. Yeah. <laughs> Count is three and two to Ramirez. 273 to left. So you are 475 to center. So that was a uniquely shaped ball yard. Three two pitch on the way to Manny Ramirez. It's this one to right field. This is going to be trouble. And it's off the scoreboard. A play by Benia to second. Almost. But Ramirez is in there with a double. What power he has down the line. And a good play by Benia, which the fans appreciate. But alas, Ramirez beat the throw. Oh, very good play by Benia, who is just getting comfortable with this new ballpark. But watch the swing by the hitter, Manny Ramirez. That ball's on the outside corner. Tremendous extension. He drives it off the wall and right. Look at Bonilla's effort. Bare hands, turns and fires. And Manny Ramirez has to hustle in. It's a bang bang play at second. Out away from him. He sees it's going to be fair immediately and hustles around the bag at first base. Takes a look at Bonilla. Knows there's going to be a play. And slides in safely. So Ramirez on second base for the third time in four innings. The Indians have had the leadoff man on second base. Converted in the first and an RBI single with two out by Albert Bell did not convert in the second. And eventually, bases loaded in the third of a leadoff man did not get on. So they've had their chances, but they have not cashed in. One for seven with risk. There's in scoring position. It's not the same as RSVP, but it's risk. I saw a new one today. Opay. Opay. Oreo Park at Camden York. Yeah, uh, yeah it's just Opay. Opace. Opace. And look, I'm reading the notes today. I said <laughs> they are 12 and 11. Opace. What? Oreo Park at Camden Yard. Is everything an abbreviation here? Hey, yeah. Beautiful ballpark. Oh, it's great. Great. And it's one and two to Paul Sorrento. Now, here's the situation Rich mentioned that the leadoff runner is at second base. Sorrento now, with a 50 count, has to make sure that at least he moves Manny Fernandez over to third base. He has not had a whole lot of success against Kevin Brown, so he's going to make sure that he gets that sinker ball and pulls it on the ground to the right side. Pretty good slider just inside. Brown at times has made some big time pitches. At times he's gotten himself into trouble. He's been an in and out outing thus far for the Oriole right hander. Trying to paint the inside corner, could not do so. And Sorrento draws the base on ball. Sorrento's at first and second with Alomar coming up. None out. The crime dog, Fred McGriff, getting back into the groove. The Atlanta Braves, boy, they have been grooving. Sunday night baseball the Braves at St. Louis against the Cardinals Atlanta looking to just run and hide and maybe this is their year to finally come through and win it all you'll get a look at them Sunday night baseball with John and Joe at 8 Eastern 5 on the West Coast and at 2 o'clock in Hawaii who's going to get that Hawaiian time as Alomar bunts it nicely 
Palmero will make the tag. Both runners moving up. A good job by Alibar. He really bunted a tough pitch to bunt. That high fastball is difficult to get on top of. Lots of time. The batters will pop that thing up. That's what Brown was hoping for here. Watch how Alomar gets on top of it and puts it right down on the grass down the first baseline. Palmero comes, gets it, cuts off the pass to first, and Alomar is credited with the sacrifice. Hey, hey. Arthur Thunder Rhodes throwing in the bullpen for the Orioles. Now Kenny Lofton up with the infield cheating in on the grass. Swinging away and fouls it off. Palmero in on the grass. Everybody in on the grass on that particular pitch. Lofton tried to cross him up by swinging away. Not exactly the pitch that Brown wanted. You got your infield in, you throw a high sinker, and in this situation, you want to pound Lofton downstairs so you get the ground ball on the infield. Jam shot. Maybe you can cut the run off the plate. You don't want to pull anything up and out of the plate, but he can drive to the outfield. Now Brown's ahead of him 0 and 2, so the infield can pinch back. At least a little bit. Get off the grass. It's humid here in Balmer, as it can be in the summer months. And Brown has been busy here. We're only in the top of the fourth inning. Big situation here. One out and two runners in scoring position. Or a pair of risk. And so far, Kevin Brown has shown the Indian hitters that he's going to try to get them out inside. He may have stayed a bit too much inside early in this ball game. He's got a cool pitch or two to the outside half of the play. Coming in there again. Just inside. Infield staying right on the edge of the grass. I don't care how good your stuff is. If you stay on one side of the plate, hitters will make an adjustment and catch up to you. The pitchers are the toughest when they're working both sides of the plate, changing speeds, and making you cover all 17 inches of that plate. Chopper that is foul. Foul ball. Ramirez would have scored on it. Remains at two and two. One nothing Cleveland. Top of the fourth inning. Rubber game of this three game set. Indians go home tonight. To start a four game series with Milwaukee. Orioles stay here for an afternoon game tomorrow for Kansas City before they head to the road. The coach. Again fouled off, and that one got Kenny. So like Jeff Houston, batters from the left side inflicting damage upon themselves. Uh, both pitchers here tonight have stayed inside. That one caught him right off the shin. And he is going to go down and regroup a bit. Now Jimmy Warfield, the trainer, is out to help out. Kenny Lofton. They just got Lofton back off the disabled list, and they would certainly hate to lose him again. Beat that ball right off his shin. Trying to get the feeling back in. Well, as we look at Lofton, all eyes will be on Cal Ripken as uh, he continues the impossible dream. Consecutive game number 2,131. And boy, I was right, huh? We will be here on Wednesday Night Baseball, September 6th. Buck and I will be our pleasure to bring it to you nationwide to see Cal pass the Iron Horse. Well, he got his streak started against the Toronto Blue Jays back in 82. I happened to be on the field at that time when he started that streak. Pretty remarkable. The percentage of the innings his team has played that he has been on the field. That'll be quite a night here. 
in Baltimore when the Angels are in town. The Lofton back in the box. Runners at second and third. One out, two to the count. One nothing Cleveland lead top four. Rip past Palmero down the line. Both runs will score. Lofton can fly. Benia has trouble in the corner, and Lofton will go for three. No play at third. A two-run triple for Kenny Lofton. Three-nothing Cleveland. Too many pitches in the same spot. Kenny Lofton was pounded throughout the entire at bat inside. Kevin Brown threw another pitch inside, and Lofton was ready for it. Got the head out, kept it fair down the right field line. Watch how quickly he gets to that ball. It was another fastball inside. It goes all the way down in the corner and rattles around. Bonilla's got to go in there and dig it out. Lofton drives in two with a triple. First pitch to Omar Vizquel is inside. That's triple number 11 for Kenny Lofton, which leads the major leagues. You know, and he's been playing with gimpy wheels and has been on the DL, so. You can see what kind of impact he has at the top of this lineup. Now the infield in trying to choke off the fourth run or what would be the fourth run of the game. As good as this lineup is Mike Hargrove believes that Lofton and Bell are the guys to get this team excited. Ripped again down the line but that's foul. When Lofton hits triples and when Albert Bell hits booming home runs everybody gets a boost. They know that Albert Bell is the guy that is really going to carry them. He has got to come through in the month of August and September. Kenny Lofton is such a distraction with his speed once he gets on base. They just have Lofton in their mind and don't have their total focus on the hitter. That causes problems. Power and speed. It'll get everybody excited as Ms. Kell will sit down. There's two outs by Edgar coming up with Lofton at third. Here's Carl. Hyde Boomer, power and speed, not two things very often associated with Milwaukee. Greg Vaughn, though, taking Danny Darwin for a ride. And this, this is a wild card race game as Texas leads the Brewers by two and a half. Milwaukee for Vaughn, his 16th, that leads the team, the fifth on the Indians, Chris. All right, Robbie, Brewers, Rangers, Mariners, Yankees, all of a sudden some new rivalries in this wild card hunt. Mayerga has struck out and gotten an infield hit off Kevin Brown, a ball that he couldn't quite play in no man's land between he and first baseman Rafael Palmero. The base hit will make it 4 nothing. Lofton in the third base. Curveball hit to third. Houston up with it over to Palmero. So Lofton is stranded, but he did the damage with a two run triple as we head to the bottom of inning number four. Here at O'Casey, it's 3 0 Cleveland. Top and bottom in the National League wildcard race. Houston by six and a half over Philadelphia. And they are now on top early. Craig Vigio is 18th off Sid Fernandez in the first. But the Stroh's up one zip, and that is where they now stand in the bottom of the second. And where we remember the All Star game, Vigio probably the best player in it. And Vigio was great, Ravi, that's for sure. One of the home runs for the National League. El Cid, uh, you know, he, the Orioles could use him right now, couldn't they? Well, it's pretty well for the Phils. They'd have to bring Johnny Padres back with him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they could use Johnny Padres, too, I think, right now. As uh, we hit the bottom of the fourth inning, Brady Anderson, Rafael Palmero, Bobby Bonilla, and then that man, Cal Ripken, who up fourth. <laughs> Broken bat up the middle by Erica Dives! Anderson beats it out. Good hustle by Brady. Fine play by Bayerga. But the Orioles with their second base hit of the night. Well, Brady Anderson's got good speed. Bayerga made a fine diving stop on the ball. But Anderson saw the play unfold in front of him and really hustled down the first baseline. Take a look at it. Good sinker ball off the end of the bat. Heads it up toward the middle. And look at the effort by Bayerga. Gloves it. Gets to his feet quickly. But look at the hustle. As Anderson gets an infield hit. Now, well, Ravi said how the All-Star game Biggio had. Certainly, Bayerga had one as well. 
Some used the glove that time. Anderson Speed got him on. Now here's Paul Merrow who has hit home runs in each of the last three games for the Orioles. In July, he homered in four straight games, which is his career high. So he homers tonight. He's equaled his career high. And certainly that's what Phil Regan and the Orioles are hoping. Get something going here against Oral Hershey. Good pitch. And Palmero waves at that pitch down to the low on the outside corner. Oral Hershiser, of course, what he put together in 1988. I would call that the complete package. Cy Young. 23 wins. MVP of the NLCS, MVP of the World Series. Oh, by the way, 59 consecutive scoreless innings. Won a gold glove. The arm trouble in 90 you talked about. He came back in 91. He's not sure still if he has his same stuff. I think he has it, but he doesn't carry it through the course of a ball game as long. I think that's what Sandy Alomar has his eye on here tonight because early in this ball game, his stuff was outstanding. Good control, great movement on that sinker ball, good breaking ball. But Alomar is going to keep his eye on the sinking fastball to see if that movement is still there in the middle of this game. Inside to Palmero, Anderson's going, but that was just well. It was a swing and a miss, and it sounded like it may have been a foul tip because it rattled around in Alomar's glove. I thought it was a foul tip, but probably be scored a pass ball. It was in on the hands of Palmero. Anderson alertly moved up. Watch the glove inside. Mm -hmm. He just swung over the top of it, and Alomar missed it. It is a pass ball. Anderson moves second on the play. I thought for sure he got a piece of it, but you run, and then they tell you get back. Anderson hustling the first to beat out the play to Bayerka, hustling the second, but a good pitch to Palmero, and Rafi will sit down, one out. Well, he can still pitch. Right there, he took something off the breaking ball, and then Palmero way out in front. So now Hershiser will work to Bobby Bonilla. If you look at scores around the league. Again, a lot of games in the day today. And we'll show you the night scores. Carl will keep you posted. Way outside to Bonilla. Ball one. coming over on the 28th of July for Alex Choa and Damon Buford from the Mets. As four homers as an Oriole was behind that pitch to Hershiser and is one and one. Leads off second base. Benia chops it foul. One and two the count. Well, Benia is doing just exactly what he didn't want to do in this at bat against Hershiser. He's done it twice tonight. He's chased that borderline low pitch. He wanted to stay out of it. Let's take a look at these trades of the ball clubs that made significant deals right before the trade deadline. The Yankees picked up Cone and Sierra. They were 11 and 7 after that deal. Andy Bennis went to the Mariners. So far they're 8 and 6, and now they got Griffey Jr. back. But after the Bobby Bonilla deal, the Orioles have slipped to 5 and 13. But basically, Bonilla has done a decent job with four homers since coming over. He's done a good job in right. I and mean, the one ball got down in the corner, but the other two plays were outstanding. Played third and left and right, and he was back shuffling around. One, two, pitch. Bobby plays off. See, these two know each other, too. Hershiser is trying to get him to chase that ball out of the strike zone down. That was a breaking ball. Benias has got to make him bring them all up. He can't be quite as selective if he strikes against this side. Off speed hit, pulled the string, and Benia will sit down. Two straight strikeouts for Oral Hershiser. 
Well, Chris, you talk about Hershiser's stuff, whether or not it was as good as it has been. He may be a little bit more of a finesse type of pitcher in that he can take a lot off the breaking ball. And that time he got Bonilla to strike out, the same as he did to Palmero on an off speed breaking ball. He'll get you talking to yourself. Smile, but then he gets a smile of frustration. Man. Oh, did a good job there, Buck. And here's Cal Ripken, favorite son. Rip, but right at Tommy. And Anderson is stranded at second base. We have played four here in Baltimore. Three nothing tribe. Mariners and Twins, we showed you Griffey's first hit, but boy, Vince Coleman in left field, batting leadoff, on base, Edgar Martinez to the gap, Kirby, can't get it, Kirby won the game last night, can't keep the ball in the park now, 1-0, and Coleman, as I said, in a leadoff position, Boomer. All right, Ravi, Coleman trying to fire up those Seattle Mariners as the Indians lead it here, 3-0, getting to inning number five. Tippy Martinez personally bringing in some Tippy's tacos. Old Owl coming up with some Boots barbecue. As we start the fifth inning. Yes, and we're getting some down to the truck. Don't worry about it, guys. As they're still looking at uh, Kenny Lofton. Jimmy Warfield, the trainer, putting a pressure bandage on there, probably to keep the swelling down so he can stay in this ball game. So he can keep it localized. Albert Bell looks at the pitch inside. The count is one and one. Albert has a pair of singles tonight. The first inning he drove in the first Indian run. And singled in the third inning. Both balls to left field. And we mentioned before that even despite the shortened season, Buck, 144 games, that Albert Bell has a chance to hit 40 home runs. The last Indian to do that was Rocky Calavito in 1959. That's a mark uh, for the Indians, and Albert certainly could get there. He has 26 as the Indians play game number 101. He swings through that pitch from Kevin Brown. It's two and two. You know, you know that Albert has great power, but you watch him during the course of an at bat and watch how he takes pitches. He's got a pretty good idea of what he wants to hit. That time he went out of his plan and swung at a bad sinker inside. But now with two strikes, he's got to shorten up and try to put the ball in play. Rips this one past Cal Ripken. Good one over in a hurry. And Albert Bell, three singles tonight. You know, Cal Ripken certainly grew up around the Orioles before he was even in uniform with his dad, Senior. And he's been looking at the Orioles for years. We spoke with him earlier. Well, without a doubt, there, there, there's been a lot of influences, and I came along at a very good time of, in Oriole baseball, and I got a chance to witness a lot of good players and a lot of uh, good influences. But there's one guy that really had a big influence on me, and that was Eddie Murray. Eddie Murray showed me the importance of being in the lineup every day. He showed me the, the stability that he provided defensively by being out there every day. He showed me the stability with just his name in the middle of the lineup, what, you know, how important that was to the rest of us. Uh, and, you know, I've been taught a certain way to play and a certain way to approach the game, but he was really the, the one guy that really stood out and showed me the way. Well, he appreciated Eddie around so much that he just turned two of them. A 4-6-3 uh, double play. Cal Ripken and Eddie Murray, longtime teammates. And of course, in 83, Orioles winning the World Series here. 79. Cal wasn't here yet. Eddie had been part of that team. He was close, lost to Pittsburgh. A lot of respect, a lot of smiles that looked at each other before the game and during this game series. In the year when Cal's going to break the Iron Horse, Eddie gets 3,000 hits. I'd say 95 is the year that both these men will remember. You know, I asked Cal about the reputation Eddie has being a tough guy. Times a problem, and he said that's totally inaccurate. He said that is not Eddie Murray. Anybody that's ever played with him knows how much of a team player he is. Now he goes out there every single day. Cal Ripken really have a lot of admiration for the way Ed Murray worked with him when he first got here to Baltimore. We heard his thoughts about how Ed Murray taught him what it meant to be on the field every day. Well, Eddie certainly played almost every game. He's a regular 160-game performer. 
as Jim Tomey as the count to two and one. Her ball, did he go around? Yes, he did. Says, did she just say yes? Yes, he did. Count is two and two. Let's watch the bat here as Tommy tries to stay back. Sure enough, he did. She did the third base umpire. Goes up with the right hand. And Brown gets Tommy there. So he gets a double play ball and a strikeout. Heading to the bottom of the fifth. Three nothing try. Well, atop the wild card race, Texas in trouble. Facing Milwaukee. With the bases loaded, John Jaha, and he joins Danny Darwin in staring at it as it goes over the fence. 11th home run this season, Milwaukee up on Texas, 6 zip. Over. Well, he got his Jaha's out, did he not, Carl? And here in Baltimore, they said, go away, Felix. Now, that's not Felix Jose or Junior Felix. That, of course, is Hurricane Felix, where they expected to hit toward Carolina, and certainly residual effects uh, we felt, if that's the case, tomorrow in Maryland. And again, we hope that uh, Hurricane is kind. The eastern seaboard. Certainly some nervous folks down in Carolina, and we're thinking about you. Harold Baines lives down near the shore here in Maryland, so he's thinking about it, too. As the Orioles and Baines, Hoyles in Houston up. This is a foul ball by Harold. We talk about uh, someone who has had a long, well, Hershiser, too, but He's thinking about Harold Baines and who he's going about his career quietly. Never any fanfare, but production year after year. Over 1,200 RBIs. Five times an All-Star, six times over 100 RBIs for Harold Baines through his career. Rip to right center field, and this will get past Manny Ramirez. Baines will kind of gimp it into second base. The throw kind of squirts in, too. That was kind of a sloppy play all the way around, except for the shot by Baines. We talk about him. He delivers Orioles with a leadoff man at second base. Boy, Tommy hawks this ball. It's out away from him. Gets good extension on that front side, and Manny Ramirez took a straight line path toward that ball, and it sailed over his head. Too high, or all too high. He knew that. And high sinker will end up up against the wall somewhere. Bain will lead off double here in the fifth. So the Orioles trying to get something going. With Chris Foyles up, who struck out in the third inning. Go with 29 home runs, the most ever by a catcher. American League 33. Carlton Fisk back in 85. Look at the infield defense here. That's Bayerga directly behind the base at second. Also run away off the first baseline. They're playing Hoyles, obviously, to pull. There's a good look at Bayerga right behind the bag at second. Hoyles a little extreme. Excuse me, base hit down the line. Baines is sent home. No play there. The Orioles on the board. It's a 3-1 game. He wants this ball outside, and it's inside, and Hoyles fights it off and flares it into right field. All of a sudden, Hershiser is having trouble with his location. He was up to Baines. He missed badly to Hoyles, and it cost him a run. Now Baines hit a high sinker ball to the alley in right center for a leadoff double, and he comes home to score on Chris Hoyles' single to right. <laughs> Thinking and looking at a little conversation at the mound. Mark Wiley out to talk with Hershiser and Sandy Alomar. So we'll see. You're right with Oral losing a little bit of control here. At least where he wants the pitches. And Jeff Houston up 
up the middle. Get past Vizquel. Turn is made, but Hoyles will hold it second. So three straight base hits to start the fifth for the Orioles. And they're in business against Oral Hershiser in the tribe. Well, he gets the ground ball that he was looking for, but it finds its way through the infield. That's a good pitch. Houston went down and got the sinker ball and drove it right back the middle, up the middle by this scale. Hoyles has to hold up in second. So three consecutive hits. The Orioles have something going here. And with nobody out, Mike Hargrove would expect to see the bunt from Brett Barbary. Barbary had the first hit of the night. The base hit back in the third inning and try and catch Hoyles nothing. They do not. Thus far tonight, even up three of the hits here. Three of his five hits have come here in the fifth inning. Outside, Barbary pulls back the punt. Ball one. Barbary played the last couple of years in Florida. 301 for the Marlins last season. Far cry better than his 244. This 247 now with a base hit. Misses the punt. Alomar throws to second base, but Hoyles goes to third. Well, Sandy saw the catcher so far off second base, he felt like he could pick him off. But when Hoyles saw Alomar come up for throw, he broke for third. He was out in no man's land. Watch the batter. He bunts through the ball. And Hoyles is a dead duck, so he says, hey, I better go to third. The ball bounces. Biskell has to play it on the hop and has no play whatsoever. Stolen base for the catcher. And now you have the answer to the question, how does a catcher get a stolen base? When the throw goes to another base and he just makes that's his first stolen base of the year, kind of an excuse me stolen base. I think he's going to get the second of his career. It's pretty heads up play. Once yeah, he got out very much so. stop, and he saw Alomar go to second base, he might as well try to go to third. He was a dead duck if he goes back to second. I think Lou Brock is safe, though, with Hoyle. Oh, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. But he's creeping up on that mark by Lou Brock with two now. Barbary fouls it off. Two to the count. Yeah, they can just get a little, again, another number like Hoyle's did. It'll be a one-run game. Bill Reagan has seen his ball club get an awful lot of opportunities lately, but not been able to cash in on it. Outside, count is full to Barbary. Curtis Goodwin on deck with runners on the corner. Boyle for third, Houston at first. You know, that play... Royals went the third on is another example of the Cleveland defense. Although it doesn't show up as an air, it's another out that got away from you. Mm -hmm. That could cost them in a short series. You go up against a tough pitcher. You need to manufacture runs, and that's a concern for Mike Hartman. Here goes the base runner, Houston, and that'll avoid the double play. Smart play by the Orioles. Royals scores. It's a 3-2 game. So you send the runner on a 3-2 pitch, it would have been two, or could have been, but they just get the force down at first base, and it's 3-2. Watch the runner at first base. He breaks on the pitch. It's a routine double play ball had not the runner taken off for second. Bayer goes to first for the out, and Barbary comes in to score. Barbary picks up the RBI. Hoyles comes in to score. Curtis Goodwin trying to make a big cut at that. Hershiser fooled him. And he's behind 0 1. Royals picking up two here, so we got ourselves a ball game here at OKC. As you look at scores. Oh, the big roundhouse curve, and that misses. 
Okay, I just want to continue a point that you brought up, Buck. The, the Indians and the defense. Look at the three leaders in the American League. I mean, they're up there in hitting, they're pitching. They're in, they're Boston, California, and Cleveland, and most of the batting in terms of the ERA, they're one, two, three, or four. But in defense, Cleveland leaves some to be desired. Boston certainly. That can be their Achilles heel of the three leaders. That's an advantage for California, would you admit? A distinct advantage. They've really catch the ball very well. Right now, they've got to overcome the loss of Gary D. Sarcy, mm -hmm. their fine shortstop. But they've moved Damien Easley second and brought up Chico Lean to play. I said Easley goes from second to short, and Chico Lean has come up to play second. But the Angels have the best defensive ball club of, of those three. Those three. This is the youngster just called up from Buffalo, Alan Embry. Throwing in the pen, the left handed. And it's one and two on Goodwin. Houston at second base. Inside. Wasn't that inside, but he jumped back, took it, count as two and two. Early in the ballgame, Hershiser was running this ball over the inside corner and now Ooh. I didn't have that same movement to drop it back on the inside. This is what Sandy Alomar was concerned about at the start of the game and that movement kind of disappearing in the middle innings. Third ball down the line fair ball. Houston around third he'll score the game is tied. Goodwin can fly. He's going to try for three. Stand-up triple for Curtis Goodwin. The Orioles have tied it. Three all. Uh, Goodwin has a good at bat here. He rips it just inside the bag at first base. And watch Manny Ramirez have all kinds of problems down in that corner. He chases it around. And you got to play the ball that bounces off the wall when you've got Goodwin on the bases. You're going to give up three at least. Goodwin gets the stop sign at third base. Steve Gorf was way down the line, ready to wave him home, but they got the ball back, and the Orioles have tied it up. Now we saw Hershiser lose his, not so much his control for strikes and balls, but his control for location. And the Orioles have taken advantage, plus they made a very smart play sending Houston on that 3-2 pitch. That's going to come back as a big play in this game. Is now the Cleveland Indians with their infield on the grass trying to choke off what would be the go-ahead run. Brady Anderson up, looked at ball one. Brady's been aboard both times tonight, hit by pitch in a single. Hits it right at Sorrento. Good one, actually went halfway down to get Sorrento to fumble a little bit. He did not. And there are now two out. Brady not happy with himself. He's not just trying to wriggle free now. With Rafael Palmero up 0 for 2. Grounded short and strike out. Soldiers at home in three straight games. So for Raphael Emerson, Lake, and Palmero, is this a time for him to be, oh, what a lucky man with another home run? Likes the swing of that first pitch. Foul the back. Now, he got a pretty good pitch. And look at Tommy, the third baseman, how far he is off the line at third base. They're playing Palmero. The pull, obviously, and I don't think he had a pretty good pitch out over the plate that he tried to slap toward left field, but his strength lies in pulling the ball. I wouldn't be surprised to see Hershiser pitch very carefully to Paul Barrow here in this situation with Bonilla up behind him. He handled Bonilla pretty well. There's good when he tripled down at third base. He represents the go ahead run. Camden Yards. They're hoping that the Orioles can catch a little fire here before it's too late. Take two or three from the Indians and get you going. 
sell out or very close to it. It's, it's just delightful here. It's just a delightful place to come. There's a good pitch for Palmero. People are nice. The fans are excited and knowledgeable about baseball. Baltimore's always been a good baseball town. Seven one forty, another sellout tonight. Sixteenth of the season. Palmero get the Orioles the lead? No. Bayer has been busy, makes the play, but Baltimore has tied it against Oral Hershiser. We go to the six, knotted at threes. Great. 2,111 consecutive games for that man, Cal Ripken. The music, and the standing O, and the unveiling. Wow. Look ahead to September 6th. What will that night be like? They put it up on the scoreboard where they show the Orioles lineup. He's now. 19 from tying, 20 from breaking. A record that would never be broken. He said he really had a special feeling when he went to Yankee Stadium mm -hmm. during his last road trip and thought about Gehrig and Gehrig playing there and the way the fans really welcomed him and showed their appreciation for what he was about to accomplish. And it really got to him. July 1st, 1982, it began. On September 6th, 1995. 2 1, 3 1. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 1 2 pitch to Manny Ramirez. He is inside. The count is 2 and 2. 13 and a half straight seasons. Think of how many players get to the big leagues and play a couple of years, but never even closed in on 13 and a half seasons of a career. He played every game for 13 and a half seasons. 29 different second basemen have played with Cal Ripken over the streak. Rich Dower being the first. John Lowenstein, one of those at the second base, says, "Good pitch by Kevin Brown to get Ramirez." And Ramirez will sit down with the strikeout. There's one out. The Iron Horse, Lou Gehrig, one of baseball's all-time greats. A record they said would never be broken. Please be with us September the 6th, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 on the coast. Wherever you are, you'll want to see that one. And Paul Sorrento chops it down. It's kind of interesting because there's not really many games, Buck, when you come to the park knowing you know there's going to be history in there. You don't know that there's going to be a no-hitter. You don't know that someone's going to hit four home runs. Seventh game of a World Series, yes, someone's going to be world champion. You know there's history. He becomes officially in the game. He goes to short and there's a half inning. And he makes plays like this on Sorrento. When the team that's behind bats for the fifth time, the game is official. And what a moment that will be. Ah, it's just it, it's a celebration of everything that's that's right with baseball. I played his whole career with one team, wants to play every day, keeps his mouth shut and plays. Oh, you can go on and on. Just everything he does on the field, the way he takes ground balls during batting practice, batting practice itself. He has a lot of energy and he keeps himself going. It parade in town that day as Alomar chops it foul. He is so busy right now with all of this streak, the interviews, the media, the demands on his time that he wears a watch yep. out onto the field. <laughs> what is 
June, but 3,637 players have gone on the DL since these streaks started. Well, we'll have, there's some unbelievable numbers. Well, they'll be able to trot out as Palmero to Kevin Brown, who trots over to first, and a one, two, three inning for Kevin Brown as he's pitching well now after the Orioles have tied it. Stay with us. Minnesota, Seattle, and Ron Coomer, formerly of the Dodgers organization, came over in the Taffany deal off Randy Johnson and out off Randy Johnson. His first, it scored Leis, and it is now Minnesota 3, Seattle 1. Remember, they beat him last night on a Kirby home run in the ninth. Chris? All right, Ravi, good game here as the uh, Orioles got three in their last at bat at the fifth inning to tie it at three. As we start the bottom of the sixth with four, five, six, Benia Ripken and Harold Baines. An RBI single by Chris Hoyles, a ground up by Britt Barbary, and a triple by Curtis Goodwin. As now the Orioles tied it. After the Indians scored one in the first and two in the fourth. RBI single by Albert Bell. And we're in triple by Lofton in the fourth as you look across the street, a beautiful night in Baltimore, and not far from where you're looking right now, across the street from the center field here. Benita fouls it back is where the father of Babe Ruth has a tavern. Babe was born there, and the reason we bring that up is on this day, on the 16th of August, 1948, Babe passed away at 53 years of age. 48 years ago. Oh, Sorrento with a beautiful one-hop step, but Hersheiser drops the toss. Benia is safe. Well, what a grab by Sorrento. That ball was a bullet. Watch him go to his knee on the right, spins around, and then gets in pretty good shape here. Leads Hersheiser perfectly. But it caught Oral on the heel. Bobby Bonilla can see the play right here, but look at the hustle. He sees Sorrento make the good play, but continues down the baseline, and Hershiser just dropped the ball. So each team now with one miscue. And Cal Ripken up. Looks at ball one for Moro Hershiser. Rip is granted a short, lined out to third. Has driven in 16 runs in the Orioles' last 17 games. So he's been hitting where others have not been. Here goes the base runner, Bobby Bonilla. <laughs> Finally got a stolen base out of Hoyles. They figure they might as well try Bonilla. Lou Brock is still safe. I was going to did a pretty good job on digging that ball out of the dirt. Bonilla didn't get a very good jump at first base. He's very late there. Makes you think it may have been a hit and run that Bonilla took off, and he is out by a mile, but Bayerga with the backhand grab of the low throw made the play. You can't imagine Cal Ripken missing a sign after being here all these years. But they should find him. Bobby Bonilla probably took off on his own. Now Bobby Bo with a lifetime total of 34 stolen bases. The element of surprise the Orioles are Bobby Bo tried. Ripken draws a walk to replace him at first base. They can't replace Rabbi in the studio. Hi Chris, the checks in the mail. Philadelphia and Houston, this is a wild card game in Dutch Dalton. An ace on the Phillies' staff this entire year comes through again. He knocks in Jeffries, but Mark Whitney with two last night has gunned down at third. The Phillies have added another one. It is now 3-1. They lead Houston. Boomer. A wild card game. Where everything is a wild card game. This is wild ending of the 95 season. As Harold Growing Bane swings and misses at that first hit. Ripped in at first, one out. 3-3 three -three game. I don't know what you call this. For the Orioles, it's a wild card game. For the Indians, it's a division game. Right? They're trying to get their magic number down. That's what they're trying. Yeah, they to are. <laughs> it won't be long. You know, I'm looking out at Ripken at first base and Baines at the plate. Eddie Murray, the opposite DH. 
all these Mike Flanagan the pitching coach they all played key roles in the 83 ALCS and the Orioles beat the White Sox three to one Baines was on the White Sox Flanagan 12 and four for the Orioles Ripley an MVP season for Baltimore Eddie Murray almost MVP season for Baltimore 12 years ago Richard Dotson Rick Burns Lamar Hoyt Lamar where does it Hoyt 280Z Dotson third degree Burns the nickname pitching staff there and the Orioles won it three games to one and then beat the Bees kids in the series 12 years ago I'd like to reminisce every now and then the Kim was one and two to Bing Ripken at first one out three three game Sizer misses outside and low. Dennis Martinez. Oh, see, the hits just keep on coming. We're over here. Tippy delivered Al Bumbley. Tippy delivered his tacos. Wasn't here. It was in the old Memorial Stadium. Starting center fielder. Ripton played in 82. He started at third base. Streak began May 30th, 1982. Started at shortstop July 1st. Been there ever since that year. Tony, slow roller, has to go to first. And Harold Baines gives it down and beats it out. Uh, that was kind of a lazy play again by the Indians. Something that won't show up again in the scorecard, but. We've seen them kind of nonchalant a couple of balls, Buck. Well, this happened to them in the Boston series at the start of this road trip. They didn't play well in the field. And it told me it just takes too long. Looks like he got hung up in his glove and that extra little crow hop cost him. And you've got to credit Harold Baines for hustling down the line. Gal Ripken always hustles. No matter what the situation is, but Jim Tomey took just too much time to get that ball out of his glove. And once again, it's not an error. But it's that Indian defense that's not able to capitalize and take advantage of a potential out. So now the Orioles with two on, one out. Chris Hoyles, who had an excuse me base hit plunker down the right field line, get it all going in the fifth when the Orioles scored three and were racing three nothing deficit. Curve ball. This is ball one. Chris, we got to think back to that Bobby Bonilla stolen base attempt now at the start of the inning. He got on base on the air by Hirschheiser, but then was gunned down easily at second base as he tried to steal second. Base was loaded now in this situation. Mm -hmm. Oils holds up. The pitch was high. 2 0. Oh. The reason that play becomes important now, Oils hits the ball on the ground. The Indians turn two. They could get out of this jam here in this city. I think Bobby Bonilla was just playing on the element of surprise, but he didn't catch anybody now. Boyles up the middle. They position him perfectly. Baerga steps at second for one over Sorrento for a double play. So good positioning, and Baerga has been busy tonight. Hershiser gets out of it. We remain. Nodded at three. I'm smiling with a 17 game lead in the uh, American League Central. Dennis Martinez, the Indians. Buddy Black, who's now a vice president, I guess. I didn't really know what to call him before, but he's kind of an advanced scout and all sorts of things. Vice president. Scouted some of the National League teams already. Yeah. Bobby Bonilla, who has scouted the National League teams throughout his career, kind of running on his own there, and in that particular play, he had to catch them by real surprise. Wonder woulda, coulda, shoulda. Bill Regan shaking his head, still thinking about it. He's just looking for some spark on this ball club. Kenny Lofton gets under it. Back goes Bonilla to right field. Back, back, back. Hits off the hot dog. It bounds away, and Lofton can fly. We'll go into third with another triple. Two straight triples for Kenny Lofton, a three for four night. As the Indians want to regain the lead off Kevin Brown. This time they try to go away from Lofton, but you see it stayed out over the middle of the plate. Bonilla goes right to the wall, but it's way up high on that scoreboard. 
Take a look at Lofton. He thinks he's got a home run, I believe, right here. He sees Bonilla at the wall, and then he sees it come off the wall, and this is what good speed will do for you. After he coasted around the base at first, he just coasts in the third base with the second couple of the night. Well, he saw there was only some mustard on that dog. He wanted to add some relish to it, and he certainly did with that hit. He's going to get it up and over that scoreboard. There, <laughs> there it is. Well, the mustard wouldn't messed up at all with that shot. I... He hit just a little above the hot dog. Two triples and a single for Lofton tonight. Grove has the go ahead run at third base. You've seen the hot dog, now gets him to drink with it, I guess. 1 0 pitch to Omar Vizquel with all the Orioles infielders on the grass. Swinging away, Brown. Kind of foul ball. But Kevin Brown stays right in on the front all night long. Target from Moyle. Well. Hits him right mm -hmm. around the label. He beats it into his foot again. That's been the theme tonight. That's got a move that kept Brown. He just makes you pound that ball into the dirt. Balls have either hit hot dogs or feet tonight. 1 1 pitch. Works him inside again. Pulls it back in the press ball. This season that Lofton has had two triples. It's 12 now. Lincoln's is major league league in that department. Oh. Now Vizquel, much like Lofton ahead of him, has seen an awful lot of pitches inside. He's a steady diet of pitches inside. Other I think Brown should be working a little bit more to the outside. As you see, Mike Flanagan go to the phone. Chuck Cotier, the bench coach there. Chuck, welcome back, Cotier. Ball four. It bounced back off the wall, but Lofton will score on it. So a pitch way inside to Omar Vizquel. And not a lot of room behind the plate. But boy, with Kenny Lofton, the ball squirts past the catcher. He's in. And just as quickly as you can say it, the Indians have regained the lead. It's a breaking ball that Hoyles just doesn't get a glove on. And watch this play unfold. Look at Brown. He is thinking about blocking the plate off, running right in front of Lofton. And then Lofton gets up and looks at him. Watch the reaction as he breaks toward the plate, sees the ball get by the catcher. Look at Brown come right into the base path, tries to block Lofton off the plate. Kenny got up and looked at him and said, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> he was going to save a run if he had a ball. And swing at the first pitch is Carlos Baerga. Strokes one into left field for his second hit of the night. Uh, there's no breathing. You think they lull you to sleep. The Indians, you, you tie the game against them. Then you realize that except for last inning, they've had at least one hit every inning. The hits just keep on coming. And Cleveland has runners at first and second. And double barrel action in the bullpen for the Orioles. Terry Clark, the righty, and the over New York met Jesse Orozco as the lefty and the vulture. Phil Regan will go out to the mound, and if he's out, that should mean a pitching change. It's going to be the righty, Terry Clark, to come in for Kevin Brown. So the Orioles have battled back, but Cleveland has regained the lead and has more Bruins. Thank you. It's a 4-3 game here with the Tribe. It's a Jerry Garcia tie I have on, and we expect to play Jerry Garcia and. Uh, you know, the Indians, there's no breather anywhere in the lineup. If you, you finally get through an inning without giving up a hit, Buck, and you know that's not going to last for the rest of the game. Well, you, the game leads. you know, Kevin Brown actually struck out seven guys tonight. He threw the ball fairly well, but the Indians keep pounding and pounding and pounding. You just don't really notice that they really haven't hammered the ball tonight, but they've been able to put the ball in play and stay right on top of this Oriole ball club. Kenny Lofton with a pair of triples. He has been the offensive leader in this attack tonight. But Mike Hargrove knows that he's got a very well-balanced lineup. Once Lofton is back in the lineup, he's fresh off the disabled list. Carlos Bayerg has been swinging a hot bat all year long. There have been many games with the penciled-in lineup that they had in spring training. There's only been about two dozen, or not two dozen, two weeks' worth of games, even less. This is the lineup that uh, the Indians have imagined all year. 
certainly against the right handers and the new pitcher now is Terry Clark. Let's see his numbers. Clark doing a pretty good job. Fastball slider and he has really done a, a pretty decent job as you mentioned Chris coming over from the Braves right at the start of the season. But he's going to have to do better than just a decent job against Albert Bell with two on and a 4-3 game. And Albert swings at the first pitch. Clark actually pulls a chain open on him. And Bell swung through it. It's strike one. Bell's been perfect tonight. Base hit over the third baseman. Base hit between third and short. And a base hit a little bit to the right of short. So if you follow the pattern, this should go right up the middle. Okay. Slowly but surely working to the right side of the diamond. Just a couple of steps to the second base side. Bell is a full hitter. Now you get Omar Vizcal is at second base. Bell's by Erga is at first. Ten Indian hits tonight. Four to three lead. to center field. Goodwin goes back, back, back. Just has room to make the catch. Vizquel to third. Vierga back to first. Boy, Albert gave it a ride. But Terry Clark gets out number two, number one in the inning. Now Clark kept Bell to the biggest part of the ballpark. That's the only thing that saved him from giving up a home run. Bell with a big swing. That ball was away from him. It got in on him a bit. He really didn't get his arms extended, but he takes Goodwin all the way to the wall in center field. The scale on the plate tags and goes to third. And Albert Bell within inches of getting another home run. And now Phil Regan will walk out and make a pitching change with Eddie Murray up. Of course, he's switch hitting Eddie Murray. Still, he wants to go to Orozco. So, the uh, signal for the left-hander, Jesse Orozco. Murray, of course, still bothered by the ribs, and when he swings from the left side of the plate, they bother him more than from the right side. The Indians have taken a one-run lead here at the top of the seventh inning, but they came within inches of taking a four-run lead. Terry Clark pitching to Albert Bell. He made a pitch, and he thought he had given up a three-run home run. Watch the pitcher. After the swing, he sees Albert Bell extend, and Clark says, oh, no, I just gave up a three-run home run. Then he peeks over his shoulder and looks at Curtis Goodwin in center and says, way to go, Curtis. <laughs> Good pitch. <laughs> so he's done his job. He came in to get one better, and he got Albert Bell on a routine 400-foot fly ball to center field. Bell is down, and I had it switched up. I had the right theory, but the reason they bring a Roscoe in is Eddie's ribs hurt when he swings from the right side of the plate. He did not play here Monday night. The Orioles uh, started a left hander, Jamie Moyer. But Eddie, you don't pinch hit for Eddie Murray in this situation, but Jesse Orozco, the former Met, he much traveled Jesse Orozco. He's on to pitch to Eddie Murray. And to switch him around to the right side of the plate. Nets, Dodgers, pitch for Cleveland, 89 to 91 to Nerasco. Brewers, three years prior to this. Under 30 lifetime saves. He's on the hill, closing down the seventh game of the World Series in 1986 with the Mets. Trying to shut the door on Eddie Murray with runners at the corners and one out. Murray is over two and a walk. There is that kind of string pulling off speed pitch from Orozco in there for a strike. Well, Orozco has really had a bounce back year here. You see hitting 287 but only 77 at bats because of that grip problem. Pops him up. Barbary behind second base on the grass. Makes the play. 
And both runners scurry back to their bases. So Murray is gone. And that'll bring up Jim Tomey. One for three with a double. And Roscoe, 38 years young, in his 16th major league season, came up and pitched at the Mets as far back as 1979. When he was a youngster. Time this guy has done a real turnaround this year, hitting against left-handed pitchers. He's hitting 300. Actually, 301 against lefties. And last year, he hit under 200. So he is gaining confidence now. He stands right on top of that plate. And he won't yield at all. He'll hang right in there, even though Roscoe will start that breaking ball right at him. What he does against left-handed pitchers is refocus his sights back toward Cal Ripken, try to drive the ball right over the shortstop's head. That'll keep him on the ball long. Orozco will throw it at first. Keep an eye on the Bayerga. Runners at first and third. Of course, Orozco doesn't exactly work like he's double parked outside the stadium. Thirty-eight-year-old Jesse Orozco to twenty-four-year-old Jim Tomey. Pitch on the inside corner, strike one. The Indians have certainly had their opportunities, Buck, but as far tonight, they have not been the classic Cleveland Indians that won two thirds of their games. Oh, that one bounces past Hoyles off the screen and Two runs score on wild pitches here in the seventh inning. Well, that's something that you never would see around this Oriole ball club. They really had a tight defense. But tonight, a couple of runs come across and watch the catcher Hoyles. It's a breaking ball, but he never gets over in front of it. He's late getting his body over. He is supposed to slide over play this one off his chest protector but he tries to glove it and it goes all the way back to the screen and another run comes across so you, two wild pitches but on both do you think the catcher should have made the play hard to say well that's a tough one but he's got to shift over there and try to block it and keep it in front of it play it off the chest talking about saving a run so it's a 5-3 Indian lead and the most unlikely of rallies a pair of wild pitches And Bayerga up to second base, so a little base hit could score him. The Orioles signed up with a three run fifth. Now a two run seventh, the Indians are on top. Inside to Tomey, and it's two and one. Little bit low. Tommy holds off nicely, and it's three and one. Well, he's shown an awful lot of discipline, and this is what you can see is the development of a very good hitter. And Tommy getting an opportunity to play, and that makes his batting coach Charlie Manuel very happy. He's taken a lot of close pitches. Inside, Tommy draws a base on balls. There are two aboard again, and Manny Ramirez coming up. Well, here comes the skipper again. He's wearing out that uh, that walkway from the dugout to the mound. And if Phil Regan will make his uh, third move of the inning. Armando Benitez. Those are the key plays, and that's the key player, Kenny Lofton. Well, that's exactly what Mark Mark Hargrove said about Lofton as far as being the spark for this offense. Even though they've got so many great offensive players, it's K 
Kenny Lofton and Albert Bell that really get this bulk of excitement. Lofton is three for four, two runs scored, two RBIs. The Indians pecking around for more with Manny Ramirez against Armando Benitez. Strikeouts and walks up there around innings pitches. So now you know everything you need to know. And Manny Ramirez knows everything he needs to know. Goodbye. Home run. Three more runs in. Eight to three Cleveland. Just like that, the Indians have erupted for a five spot. Wow. Clark, Orozco, Benitez, Brown, they've all worked here in the seventh. But the big work done by Manny Ramirez. A high fastball, and he gets great extension. Remember, he doubled down the right field line earlier in the game, and this time he goes deep to left field. There's no doubt on his mind. He has just hit number 27. So a 3-3 game, now 8-3 as the eighth man up in the inning for the Indians is Paul Sorrento and Manny Ramirez. That was a no doubter. So you look at number one spot in the order two triples in a single and two run score. The number seven spot in the order three run homer a double and two run score. That's one and seven. They get you from everywhere in this line. They've got a good mix of lefty righty all the way up and down in the lineup and they got the versatility of having surrender in there with Murray's healthy. They can put Murray in first base. Surrender the day off. Pretty tough lineup to work your way through if you're pitching. has been done by the Cleveland Indians here in the seventh. And there it is. Dots and X's. All sorts of stuff. Oh, Sorrento hits this one a mile. Back goes Goodwin. He just has room. So two long fly ball out to center in addition to Home run by Ramirez, triple by Lofton, eight to three Cleveland. We are back in Baltimore. A stunned Oriole bullpen has watched the Indians erupt for five runs here in the seventh. As the Orioles come up after seventh inning stretch, and there, there it is. They are stunned. You know they got to get their hitting shoes on, and they got to get their running shoes on too, because in the wild card race, six games back isn't deathly. But with all those teams to leap over and another loss staring you in the face, even though Texas is getting bombed tonight, Phil Regan tried to make all the moves, but they, uh, the Indians had answers for every move that he made. And now pitching the youngster, Alan Embry is on in relief for the Tribe with Wayne Kirby going to right field. Now left hander Alan Emery works in his seventh ball game. He has been back and forth between Triple A and the big leagues. This is his third stint with the Indians. And this is a good story. Alan Emery came up in 92 and made his major league debut against the Toronto Blue Jays in September. He was 0-2 at 92 and had an elbow problem, had elbow surgery, and he is back. Going hard again and very effective. Any personable Wayne Kirby's in right field now. Ramirez has certainly does his done his job. There were four bombs at that inning, Buck, weren't there? A couple just missed. Deep drive to center by the first baseman yeah. Sorrento. Got a pinch hitter here for the Orioles to lead off the seven. Jeff Crane Manto. Against the lefty now. He and Houston go back and forth at third base, depending on righty lefty. So Manto, I assume, will stay in at third base. As the Orioles now have their work cut out for him, five runs down here, thanks to that bomb, homer number 27 by Manny Ramirez. Off the triple 
was a bomb. Bell had a long hit to center. Sorrento out to center. Looks like to see him swing the bat. And he lofted him in the story tonight. Ramirez came in to get the headlines of the three run homer. Lofton did the work. Put him in a position where they had to go into the middle relief. And unfortunately, there was none for the Orioles. Embry is now behind uh, Manto, three and one. And it's interesting how this game got away from the Orioles. There was a couple of wild pitches that really played into the Indian attack. And then Armando Benitez gave up that long bomb to Manny Ramirez. But it was a very non-typical Orioles defensive game tonight. Yeah, Manto draws a base on balls. To bring Barbary up and then the top of the order. Phil Regan's club scored eight last night and won by the score that you're seeing right now, eight to three. And they roll another eight. Oral Hershiser will stand to win it unless they come back. So Oral went up his mark to ten and five. A couple innings when he lapsed, but first four he looked in control. He knows what he's doing out there. And Alomar wants to make sure that Embry knows what he's doing out there. Well, having a bit of a Battle with his control right now, and Sandy Alomar came out from behind the plate. He said, Come on, let's go. We've got a five run cushion. Use that good fastball. Right over the plate, please. Hard to hit a five run home. I've seen people try. <laughs> Never seen it done. Yeah, lots of people try. In this situation, the Orioles need more base runners. Fred Barbary up. And it's 2 0, oh, so Embry. Got to at least locate the plate here first. Get there, strike one. Mark Wiley. I guess he's got to be Wiley Coyote. I mean, there's really no way out of that. On the horn, get somebody else up. Now, yeah, Barbary. Yeah, well, how did he get it? It carries back to left field. Albert Bell is back. Just missed it, as we suspected. Manto back to first, never missing it. Ravi. Thanks, Boomer. Another guy not missing much tonight. Andre Dawson already with a granny. Get out of here. He does it again. Not a grand slam, but a home run. Five ribbies on the night for the Hawk. And Florida keeping Atlanta at bay. It's 8-5. Remember, though, the Braves, more last inning at bat wins than any other team in the National League. They've done it 21 times. Boomer. Andre Dawson, the Hawk, still hitting him out with a pair. Now we'll check about what a good guy Dawson is. Here's one of the really nice people in this game. Kevin Smallmouth Bass. Long time Houston Astro has been around. Here in Baltimore has done a good job. You know what you get with Kevin? 52. I used to be a hitter better than that when he was with the Strohs. I will tell the story of how he was Kevin Smallmouth Bass, not Kevin Largemouth. The 86 All-Star game. He said, you know what makes me sound like a bad guy? You call me Largemouth Bass. He was laughing, of course. Here's a Smallmouth Bass hit. That drops into right field. He said, change it to small mouth. I'll be forever grateful. He said it with a smile. I said, you got it. The small mouth with a small base hit, but the Orioles have a pair on. And where did that throw go from Kirby, by the way? What was that? It's another bad throw from the outfield, but this is Kevin Bass's eighth pinch hit home run of the season. Home run, excuse me, pinch hit of the season. That's a little flare in the right. Watch Kirby. He throws it all the way over to third base. He's trying to throw it to second of his scales. <laughs> He's so excited to get in the outfield that he went to uncork one. Well, the Orioles he can scrap their way back in it. With Brady Anderson up. One for two and a hit by pitch. Bass at first, Manto at second, two pinch hitters getting aboard. There's a strike to Brady Anderson. You see, with Embry, you're not going to get much more than a fastball right now. He's got a little bit of a slider, but in this situation, they want him to go ahead and try to get some command of that fastball. That's a slider right there. You see, not much break on it. Brady Anderson hitting just 190 against left handed pitching this year. Ooh, Anderson 
Jackson didn't like the call, but it's a strike that count is two and two. Zembry trying to get the veteran Anderson out. That well, looked like it might have been off the plate and low. And the Alamo did a pretty good job. Looked like it was outside, but Embry got the call. Anderson stand alive. Embry's mark in Buffalo. Now you can recall for a third time as the third stint with the Indians. Three and four, but an ERA of 0 0.89. That'll get some attention. Oh, he pulled it off, pulled a little bit off that one and pulled Anderson. Brady goes down, there's two outs. Well, this is supposed to be a breaking ball. The target from Alomar. And that ball just hangs up so high. Anderson saw it, chased it. There was a ball. But he got his bat going, and once he did that, he was sunk. Continues to have his trouble against left handed pitching. With you out, Rafael Palmero is up. He's 0 for 3 tonight. After hitting home runs in each of his last three games, this would be a good time to extend that to four games. Left-handers versus Embry. One for nine in the bigs in his three stints with Cleveland. Nothing win for the Mets. Whatever that was. Up top and outside. Two and one. Plunk and Ossenmacher throwing in the Cleveland pen. The Mets may have an interesting club in a year or two. Those young hurlers. There they are. Paul Orville Ossenmacher, the left-hander. Eric Kerplunk, the right-hander. You know, if it gets closer than that, who we'll see in the ninth. Jose, 34 out of 34, Mason. Oh, he's uh, nowhere near the pen at this point. Near, near pitching off the mound. Down is three and two. So everybody will be moving here. We don't even begin to move until we get to the bottom of the eighth inning. It set a record. Executive saves. Runners going. Palmero swings and fouls it back. We'll do it again. That record, by the way, for his consecutive saves is 36 in a row by Dennis Eckert. Mesa with 34 for 34 is certainly closing in on the third best is Rod Beck last year with 28 in a row. So that this is his first year as a closer. So this has probably been the biggest surprise of everything for Cleveland. Oh, without a doubt. They just were hoping that they would find somebody to pitch late the ball game. Here's Palmero again. Oh, and Embry strikes him out. So Embry looked like he had control problems, but he K's Anderson and Palmero, and the Orioles strand a pair. It's eight to three. The Indians lead at eight to three here as we move to the top of the eighth. And uh, Alan Embry and Mark Wiley got together, Buck, after the inning. Well, Alan em Embry got a couple of strikeouts to end the seventh inning, but he gets a few tips from Mark Wiley. Embry was concerned about his breaking ball, and Wiley demonstrating he got to finish up on top, get on top of that slider, and a little more spin to it. And Embry struck out Anderson and Palmero to close out the seventh. Well, Sandy Alomar is up, and... Kevin Smallmouth Bass stays in left, moves to left. Brady Anderson moves to center. Jeff Manto stays in the game at third. And Armando Benitez, who surrendered that three run home run to Manny Ramirez, will start with Alomar, Lofton, and Vizquel. And fishing is Alomar, and there is one out. Our second to preseason uh, NFL game this Saturday night at 8 o'clock from Arrowhead, the Buffalo Bills. 
Eagles. Will they be back for another try at the Super Bowl? Will the Kansas City Chiefs make that step? It's the Bills and the Chiefs. Jimbo and Derek and all the gang. Our game at 8 o'clock Eastern time from Arrowhead. Join us at quarter to 8. It was yours truly and Tom Jackson with the NFL tonight. Get you ready for the game. And everything else, busy night in the preseason football. We'll be cutting it all evening long. Kenny Lofton been a starter tonight. Pair of triples, a single. A couple runs scored, two RBI. You think the Indians made a good trade? With the Astros in December of 91, when they get Kenny Lofton along with Dave Rohde for Eddie Tobinsey and Willie Blair. Lofton slugs this to right field. Back it goes. Back, back. Oh, the catch is made. Hit right field. Boy, Benitez has been rocked, has he not? Lofton looking to do everything tonight. Well, he thought he'd hit another possible triple. What an effort by the right fielder Bonilla. Benitez throws that fastball right down Broadway and Lofton has been all over fastballs tonight. But look at the effort by Bonilla all the way from right field takes it just a stride short of the wall at the center. But Kenny Lofton has hit the ball hard all night long. I tell you what in a loss tonight or what looks like a loss for the Orioles I've been impressed with the way Benilla's played right field. Well, right field hustling down the yeah. line on that ground ball to first base. The one play we didn't understand was on the bases, but defensively he's done a good job. One got rattled in the corner, but he hasn't played here very much. He's, he's done a good job out there in right field. Boy, Lofton should be power tonight. Two triples, the one off the hot dog. That one I thought was going to hit it to the hit it here side. He hit it there. Vizquel, a lazy fly ball to left, right at Kevin Bass. And so a uh, one through three for Benitez, but the Orioles got to get going. They trail at 8 3, heading to the bottom of the eighth. A rarity, a one, two, three inning by the Cleveland Indians, but the Orioles, Benia Ripken and Baines coming up, have some work to do against the youngster Alan Embry. A reminder that after we're done here, we'll go out to Dwayne and Joe at the Merck. San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium, the San Diego Padres, very much alive in that NL West chase. NL West chase. Say that five times fast. The Dodgers have won this afternoon. The Rockies have won this afternoon. And there it is at 10:35. Pittsburgh and San Diego. As the Indians, now they're looking towards the postseason against the Angels. They've had a couple interesting series. Talk about some teams that can hit. They're two and three, and against the Red Sox, they're five and four. Having lost the two last week in Boston. So if you're looking for head to head thus far, really no ground one thus far among the three division leaders. Not, not division at all. Leader. They're all pretty similar. Offensively, they're about the same. Talk about the edge that the Angels have over these other two ball clubs defensively. I guess you're right about the effort Bobby Bonilla has put on here tonight and after his club fell. Behind by five and the top of the seven, he has continued to play hard. Didn't have a base hit to show for it yet. 0 for 3, reached on an error. Well, you know, you have to be a, I uh, understand, trigonometry to figure out the playoff system this year and who will be home and an opening round. It all depends on who the wild card is. But in the opening round of the, I'm going to try this now. I, I mean, it could take two hours, but. The opening round of the ALCS, the winners of the Eastern and Western Division, play the first two games on the road and have three, four, five at home. Well, in the National League, the Eastern and Central winners. Is that Ryan Duren on the mound there? With the, what did that knock off? Pieces of the padding back on the <laughs> backstop. I told you we wouldn't get through the, uh, the playoff system. This one took off a bit. Back in. Embry heard it talking about it. He threw that at us, I think. Rip by Benia, base hit. So Bobby Bow now has a base hit for the evening. And the Orioles, at least they're getting some runners on. And Cal Ripken coming up.
Now, of course, to continue that wild card thought, if the wild card, forget it. I, you know, I, it would take an hour to explain it, and this is one of the problems with the postseason. None of the fans even understand who's playing for what. Ripken and the Orioles are trying to play for a berth. They'll play anywhere you send it as he fouls this one back. Well, here's a good piece of advice. If your club is in the wild card hunt, keep watching, and at the end of the year, we'll tell you if you got in or not and where you're going to play. <laughs> if there are playoffs to determine who gets in the first round of division championships, we'll have that here on ESPN. Of course, there's a long list of how that works also. Now, heaven forbid we get to the AL or the NLCS is ripped ripped one foul. No one really knows who's home there either. Point being, if you're going to go to this with three division winners and a wild card, do it like football. If you have the best record, you're home throughout. You get the extra game at home. Then, Cleveland and California, each with big leads, have something to play for the last two weeks rather than just waltzing through. But I guess in a few years, they'll figure out the situation. That's the wild card picture up to the date. Ripped into center field. Coming on as Lofton got a good jump on the ball. Looks Benia back. So Cal hit it well. But alas, we'll be hitless tonight. Look at the eyes of Cal Ripken as he's focused in on that pitch from Embry. He has played all of those games and he's played it with that kind of intensity. No matter what the score is, no matter what his club's position is in the standings, it's the same effort day in and day out. No. As Harold Baines uh, swings and misses. We will say this about the Indians. The way it's set up in the playoffs, they will have the first two games at home and the next three on the road in the first round. And unless they play the wild card team in the second round, they will have the middle three games at home. And if they go to the World Series, the AL is the middle game. Point is, Cleveland's going to have the best record in baseball and will not have home field any of the times. World Series has always been on a rotation. That's fine. There are some kinks in the system. Let's just leave it at that. I don't think that will be Ray of, Davies. There are an awful lot of uh, Cleveland Indian fans that are going to be whining about not having home field in the World right Series. <laughs> Baines is down and Hoyles is up. And of course, no one in Cincinnati will see Cleveland play in the postseason either, but that's another discussion. It'll take the entire month of October to get through all of this, of course, but there will be some good games when you get to see them. Chris Hoyles swings at the pitch and will foul this one play out of the glove of a fan and Sorrento says our phones, <laughs> wallets, everything will come out. Having fun down the right field line. Yeah, you got to have I mean, the 0 for 2 on that, the double error. But and then he falls on the oh. field. Did he ever get the ball? Yeah, he... Well, that's why it was Yankees. The play. Meanwhile, Hoyle slams it to left back. It goes back, back, back. They made the catch in left field. Chris Hoyles has made it an 8-5 game. The Orioles give him credit. Rally in the seventh. Guys on in the eighth. And Mike Hargrove will come on. Alan Embry is not... He's danced with trouble all night in these two innings, Buck. Wow, that time he got that fastball on the inner half to play for Chris Hoyles. And the Orioles catcher hammers it over the wall. A two-run home run. And the Orioles have... Bond to within three, and that's going to be the end of the night for young Alan Embry. Home number 13 for Chris Hoyles. Maybe there's some life in the Orioles yet. 8-5. Your deck. The Orioles trying to scrap back here in the bottom of the eighth inning. 
little party time as Chris Hoyles has gotten to them with an 8-5. They've knocked out the reliever Embry, and on the pitch is the right-hander Eric Kerplunk, one-time Yankee in Oakland A. Now, this Indians ball club has the best bullpen in the American League, and Eric Plunk has been a very important part of that. 52 and two-thirds innings, 59 strikeouts. Just three home runs allowed. He's done a good job. Shown a little bit of fatigue here in the last couple of weeks, but overall, he's been outstanding pitching, mostly as a setup guy for Jose Mason. It's Royals. Home run knocked Alan Embry out of the game. And the Orioles have to be thinking about those two wild pitches that led to Indian run. I don't mean to be harsh on Embry because against the lefties, he was tough and looks like he could be tough, but then again, it, his concentration or something wandered. He looked good and he looked off at the same time. Well, he has just been up and down all year long, and I don't think they're very upset about the home run. They know that he is not going to pitch in those situations in a crucial point of the ball game. For the time being, his job will be to pitch to left-handed batters. And he overmatched the ones he faced yes, he in this did. game. Yes, he did. So that'll bring up Jeff Manto, who pinch hit for Jeff Houston in the seventh inning walk and stayed in the game at third base. First pitch is up top. Third Indian pitcher of the night. The Orioles have used four. Brown and Hershiser started. They will be the pitchers of record if nothing changes from here on. And there is another man very tough on lefty, Paul Ostenmacher. Tavares get up. He has great stuff. Three and zero to Manto. Well, this is not what Mike Cargrove had in mind. Now you don't want to put anybody on with the base on balls. That just encourages the offense. This has not been a particularly great road trip for the Indians. Four and five so far. Four pitches. Four balls. Tremanto, who has come in and drawn two base on balls. Bases on ball. Brett Barbary is up. He's one for three. A single in the third. Indians led it three nothing. Orioles tied it with three in the fifth. Indians on the five spot in the seventh. Orioles have two here in the eighth. That's where we stand. Eight to five, Cleveland. Speed pitch in there for a strike. Eric Plunk, 31 years of age, in his 10th major league season. Ready to go for Cal. Barbara just tipped that one a little bit. Plunk is it, 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 it's an oddity. He was traded for Ricky Henderson twice. In both directions. Yeah, both directions. Went from the Yankees to Oakland and the end of the 84 season in the Henderson deal. In the middle of 89, when Henderson went back to Oakland, Plunk came back to the Yankees. Ooh, good fastball there. And Barbary is gone. So Plunk made it interesting, but gets the third out. Orioles pull, though, to within three, heading to the ninth. Eight to five, Tribe. Our Indians lead it as we go to the top of the ninth. Doug Jones comes on the pitch for the Orioles. This is August 1st against the Blue Jays. Domingo Cedeno hits a three-run home run off Doug Jones to cap off a six-run comeback by the Blue Jays in the top of the ninth. They came back to win 12 to 10. And Doug Jones didn't register it out as he came in to get some work and listen to the booze. And Doug Jones was a very frustrated pitcher that night. But Phil Reagan brought him in. He hadn't pitched in three days. He needed some work. And Sandy Martinez hit a two-run double. And then Domingo Cedeno hit a three-run home run off Doug Jones. And it capped off a big Blue Jay rally in the ninth inning. Well, that was the series. They had just gone uh, two out of three with the Brewers and two out of three wins with Texas. And 
And all of a sudden, the two out of three with the Texas, two out of three with the White Sox. Well, that series with Toronto, you saw they lost three out of four. Lost two out of three to Milwaukee. Lost two out of three to the Yankees. Lost all four to Boston. Are in danger of losing two out of three to Cleveland. That kind of was the, I don't know if you want to call it the watershed or the waterfall on August 1st for the Orioles. Of course, Lee Smith, meanwhile, with his 29 saves, and Jose Mason with his 34. The Orioles had them both. They don't have a, a closer. Oh, watch out. That's, that's dangerous. And speaking of Jose Mesa, he is up, and the Cleveland record for saves is 43, helped by Doug Jones. So Mesa could eclipse that. This looks like a closer. He's got the fool going. They've been waiting on him for quite a while to find the spot where he was going to be successful. Well, certainly Doug Jones has been a very good relief pitcher. He's been in the All-Star game several times. He doesn't have the same stuff this year that he had elsewhere with Houston and Cleveland. He gets one out here as Viagra fouls it. Albert Bell. season mark with Cleveland with the all-time safety there as well. Stuff with your ERA on the road is 2.66 and your ERA home is 8.69. That'll get the uh, hometown fans' attention. Mm -hmm. Off speed pitch, which is what we see from Doug Jones. Albert Bell, who has three singles tonight. RBI single in the first. Pirates and Padres coming up after we're done. We'll go out to the Murph. Wayne Statsink. And Joe Morgan. Yep, another open. The Hotel California goes by the boards. Oh, I know that feeling well. trying to quell the Indians here and hope for a little magic from his teammates at the plate in the bottom of the ninth. Now there's two and one. The veteran relievers here for the Orioles, Roscoe and Jones, no, they're, not, they're not exactly express mailing this ball up to the plate here, are they? They're, they're, they're just putting the, the stamps for the postcards on these balls. Well, that's the way Doug Jones has pitched throughout his entire major league career. Developed a very good changeup. That's his outfit. You throw it slow and slower. You don't throw too many fastballs. Gotta give him the nod. He's been an all-star five times. Three with the Tribe and two with the Strohs. Actually, once with the Strohs and with the Phillies last year. An all-star for three different teams. And he gets Albert. Here's two down. Let's move it on over to Carl Rabbit. Hi, Boomer. Last night, the Twins score five unearned runs in the ninth. Boom. Back comes Seattle tonight with a five-run eighth inning of their own. It's been a strange couple of games, and this is Doug Strange. A triple scores Buner and Blowers in the eighth. Comes off Stevens in Seattle, getting themselves right into the thick of things. Up 6-4. Back to you. Mariners. Intriguing team. We talked about him earlier. This is Eddie Murray. You know, we talked about some of the things that Murray has done, certainly on the all-time Oriole list. You forget. He needs 224 hits to be 10th lifetime. You don't think of Eddie Murray that way, but Napoleon Lajoie, 3242 in hits. Murray with 3,018. That's Top 10 lifetime hits. That's pretty darn good company. 38 18th in homers. 14th in RBIs. 14th in total bases. Yeah, he's just not hanging around. No, he's just. <laughs> he has, and he's making a strong contribution to this effort this year for the Indians. Let me see that all time hits list. Lou Brock's next. There's other lists there. I mean, he's just 
top 20 in some pretty impressive categories. Ah, he could be 10th in hits very easily in the next two years. Get 200 hits. High hits. Count of stream one to Murray. And he draws the base on ball. Another footnote on Murray. 400 home runs, 3,000 hits. Aaron Mays, Musial, Yaz, Winfield, and Murray. So two of the six are sitting here in the Indians dugout. Directly to Cooperstown. Mm -hmm. As he's done with his playing. I think he started to recognize the significance of 3,000 hits as it got closer and then finally ended. He was awarded the press conference after the 3,000 hits. I think he really felt pretty good about it, how important it was and what it meant, what an accomplishment it is to play that long and be that consistent and that successful. Jim Tomey, one of the wide-eyed youngsters of the Indians who listened to Eddie Murray and Dave Winfield. They're going to Paul Sorrento before the game. He's going to sit down and talk with them much. You have to be an idiot not to, not to peg them for what they can tell us what they do with slumps, to limit them to three or four days, not ten games, things like that. Things they've seen. You go ask, they're happy to tell you. More than happy. That is one-on-one -on -one to Jim Tomey. Looking ahead to the uh, Oriole night, be the top of the order. Bass, Anderson, and Paul Merrill. Then Benia and Ripken. Way inside. Oils has to scramble around and make that play. Two outs, Murray at first. Three run lead for the Indians. I'd like to go home on a winning note. Big swing at the foul and run off Coral's mask. You know, if the Indians win here, they'll give him a five and five road trip. Big swing, you see that foul tip straight back into the catcher's mask. Kenny Kaiser had an interesting reaction today, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> Rolled it back to the pitcher. Didn't take Bevington long. Who was it? Wasn't it Nolan Ryan that did that once? I think Kaiser rolled the ball out. Nolan rolled it back to him. It's <laughs> another one. I remember a pitcher doing that. I don't remember who it was. Oh, Rabowski, that's exactly who it was. Al Rabowski. He, Kaiser threw the ball out to him on the ground. He rolled it right back. <laughs> now Doug Jones on that Ephus pitch gets Tommy. So Jones is strikeout two of the three uh, for the outs. Orioles need three in the bottom of the ninth. All right, Dwayne, thank you. We'll get out to you as soon as we are finished here. The Orioles would like not to be finished here. As the top of the order will be working against Jose Mesa, the one-time Oriole. This time, well, they're talking about maybe Cy Young and MVP. 34 saves out of 34 opportunities. He's been automatic this year, Buck. Averaging a strikeout an inning, and he's allowed just one home run. You know, Jose Mesa was dealt from the Toronto Blue Jays for Mike Flanagan way back in 19... 87. Yep. And Flanagan pitched down the stretch. Mike Cargrove now has his closer on the mound, and the Indians are 51 and 0 when mating after eight innings. Jose Mesa, 34 for 34, as Chris mentioned. He was an Oriole until July of 92, and they traded him to Cleveland for Kyle Washington. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't mean Kyle Washington. I meant. Cordell Washington. George Washington. <laughs> They'll face Kevin Bands, Brady Anderson, and Rafael Palmero. And with a three-run lead, when you come in, this is one of the save opportunities, which was really soft. Soft, isn't it? Yeah. Three-run lead. Two-run lead with the on-deck uh, batter being the potential time run, I can see it. But at any rate, Mesa didn't care about it now. He's in there throwing his fastball and 252 strikes at 98 miles an hour. Phil Regan caught him 
the sinking fastball. And Reagan said, you know, if I was knew if I was leaving Cleveland, I wouldn't have taught him that last year at the end of the year. I mean, he was the pitching coach of the tribe last year. Mason's always had a good arm and a good fastball, but Reagan gave him a gave him a sinker that gives him more movement on that pitch. An interesting article in the paper the other day here in, uh, in Baltimore. They had interviewed Dennis Eckersley about it. You know, and X says no power to him. He's doing everything, but you have to continue this. And he wasn't taking anything away from it. But 18, 17 game lead. You wait to the money situation. You keep doing it through that, and then you're in a different class. Bass just missed ripping one down the line. It goes foul. But Eckersley said, you know, more power to him. It's a record that. It's nice that I own, meaning 36 for 36, but I'm ready to give that one up, he said. Mace is ready to take it. Well, he has really worked on his delivery and his consistency, and I mentioned the strikeout per inning. That's a good ratio for any closer. Vance has worked into a three and two count. Evan knows what he's doing up there, and maybe he can. Find a little opportunity. The Orioles have had guys on in the seventh. After the Indians took the big lead. Rowley going to the eighth when Hoyles hit a two-run homer. Bass stays alive. Twenty-five straight scoreless innings. Dating back to June 8th for Jose Mason. Ball the second by Erga again with the play, and there's one out in the Oriole ninth. Let's check in with Carl. Hi, Boomer. The Phillies up 3 1 on Houston. BGO did it earlier, and BGO does it again. This time, an RBI infield single as Vitalico doesn't get over to cover. It made it 3 3, and that's where they now stand. Now the Phillies have gone up 4 3 on a sack fly. Back to you. All right, Ravi went out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Brady Anderson up with Rafael Palmero on deck. Jose Mason. Ball explodes off the mound, misses with ball one. Down and in, 2 0. Oh, so He's, still, he's missing the plate a little bit tonight, which has kind of been the way this game has been. It hasn't been a particularly sharply played ball game all around. And the one thing Eckersley did was the strike right away. First pitch strike. Well, a lot of closers come into games when they've got a very comfortable lead and have trouble really getting into it. And the three run lead, I'm sure Mason doesn't really feel like there's an urgency about this save on the line. He knows he's got the streak going, but. A lot of closers come in without a save on the line and just can't throw effectively. Just don't have that same edge going. Fouled off, so the count is two and two to Anderson. The Indians looking to win for the 68th time in 101 games. Pretty well to center field, but there's a lot of room for Kenny Lofton, and there'll be two out here in the Oriole ninth. Last over Baltimore will be Rafael Palmero. Well, we've seen the Indians do it. Kenny Lofton and Manny Ramirez, the number one of the seven batters. That whole lineup is just chock full of trouble, Buck. Well, they sure are. There are no soft spots anywhere in the lineup. And with Kenny Lofton healthy and back in the lineup, two triples here tonight. Indians feel pretty good about their offense. We saw the defensive problems again tonight. The lack of concentration gave up a couple of balls that should have been outs that weren't recorded as errors. But Mike Hargrove said he's going to address that. But overall, it's a pretty tough ball club. They've got a strong bullpen, good starting rotation. 
feel pretty comfortable about their 17 game lead. <laughs> well, they should. Another game, another eight runs for the Indians. So now the Orioles down to the last strike. The next time we'll be here will be September 6, 2131. Euro for Cal. That'll be quite a night. Fly ball to center. Lofton's over, and it's fitting that the offensive star has made the last put out of the game. So Oral Hershiser wins his 10th at Cleveland Indians. Led 3 0. The Orioles battled back, but then a five spot by the Tribe in the seventh has salted it away. The Indians win two out of three in the series. Beat the Orioles 8 to 5. For Buck Martinez and all of our crew at the early game of Wednesday Night Baseball, I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching. Now out to the mark with Wayne and Joe, guys.